is to come up with the awareness of fostering the understanding among the co-workers. I request all the participants from across the country to make use of this forum to the best of their abilities. And I would like to take this opportunity to pray for all victims for whom affected with flood recently will be okay. So, and happy Merry Christmas for this weekend. And thank you and enjoy the session. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Azlina, for your welcome remarks. Without further ado, now I ple I'm pleased to invite Dr. Professor Dr. Nasruddin Mohammed to deliver his speech. The recording of the opening remarks will be presented. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Mr. Azrul Izam Hamzah, Deputy Director, Center for Leadership Sustainability, Higher Education Leadership Academy, ACAP. The uh, Honorable Speakers, Professor Dr. Wan Ahmad Amir, Zai Wan Ismail, Director, Institute for Poverty Research and Management, University of Malaysia, Kelantan, UMK. Professor Dr. Khalija Awang, Department of Chemistry, Faculty of Science, University of Malaya. Moderators, Associate Professor Dr. Azizah Mainal, Department of Chemistry, Faculty of Science, University of Malaya. Professor Dr. Joseph Sahaya Anand Tangeraj, Faculty of Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering Technology, University Technical Malaysia, Melaka. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace be upon you and good day. On behalf of Academy Kepimpinan Pendidikan Tinggi, ACAP, I am proudly extending my appreciation to everyone initiative in organizing the Staying in Sync, Fostering Understanding Among Co-Workers Online Forum. Education has been badly affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, especially on the issues of university dropout and learning loss. Post-pandemic has provided a paradigm shift in the way of improving education that is accessible for everyone. There has been a change of landscape of rapid digital information transformation in higher education institutions during the global pandemic. From disruption to recovery, real, the climate change, digital divide, increased focus on applied learning, physical tests, anxiety, and uh, falling numbers of applicants to higher education clearly still exist, posting the challenge to recovery post-COVID-19 pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, during the post-COVID-19 recovery, we should leverage in transforming higher education by turning challenges into opportunities. Higher education had to react rapidly in helping to shape a better, more equitable and just post-COVID world. The Malaysian Education Blueprint, uh, the uh, MEB 2015-2025 Higher Education, is coming to the end of its term in the next three years. As society members and local leaders, academicians hold such a vital role in unlocking the potential of not just those in the higher education realm, but also the society. However, unlocking potential goes beyond just pushing people towards greatness. Employing the transformative power of education, unlocking potential also revolves around enabling people to pursue a meaningful life while utilizing their own strengths, capabilities and skills. This, however, requires compassion, especially as we cope with public health and socio-economic uncertainties where we are all learning to live with traces of isolation, fear, confusion and grief. Ladies and gentlemen, compassion helps us connect with others, mend relationships and move forward while fostering emotional intelligence and well-being. Compassion takes empathy on one step further because it harbors a desire for all people to be free from suffering and it is imbued with a desire to help. Compassion also promotes employee engagement 
dedication and loyalty. What is more, employees who work together with compassion are more likely to cooperate and help each other out. This is why academia needs compassionate, compassionate leadership more than ever. Compassionate leadership involves a focus on relationships through careful listening to, understanding, empathizing with and supporting other people, enabling those who lead to feel valued, respected and cared for so they can reach their potential and do their best work. Compassion in leadership creates stronger connections between people. It improves collaboration, raises levels of trust and enhances loyalty. In addition, studies find that compassionate leaders are perceived as stronger and more competent. Compassionate leadership is not just about sympathizing with other people's hardships, but also about seeing people as humans that deserve appreciation, respect and love, which then allows them to fulfill their own potential. This forum will bring academicians on the journey of rethinking higher education and exploring humanizing academia with compassionate leadership. My fellow audience, I would like to convey my sincere appreciation to UM, UMK, UNIMAP, UNISA, UPNM, Utah, UTEM and UUM organization, organization committees for the effort and commitment who worked to make this forum a reality. Lastly, I believe all of you will have an effective and fruitful session. I wish you all the best to the forum. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Professor Dr. Nasruddin, for your opening remarks. For your information, we need to change uh, our speaker due to unavoidable factors. We apologize for any inconvenience caused. Now, I would like to introduce you the first speaker, Associate Professor Dr. Laswan Abdul Rashid. Dr. Laswan is an Associate Professor in the Faculty of Languages and Communication, University of Sultan Zainal Abidin, Malaysia. He is currently experiencing life as a diplomat for his second month as the Director of Education Malaysia Jordan at the Embassy of Malaysia Amman Jordan. He obtained his PhD in education from the University of Nottingham, United Kingdom, and he completed his postdoctoral fellowship at the University of Leeds, exploring applied linguistics in an educational context. His research interests include teaching education, professional development, and contemporary discourse in online settings. He has been a keynote speaker at International Conference on Teaching and Learning, Language, Literature, and Linguistic a plenary speaker at International Conference on Creative Teaching, Assessment and Research in the English Language, and a featured speaker at Indonesia Malaysia English Language Teaching Conference. He is the editor in chief of Journal of Nusantara Studies, a social science journal index in the web of science. He has had the research articles published in the Discourse Studies, Discourse and Society, Policy, features in education and many more scopus and WOS journals. He is the main author of three books. In 2019, Web of Science nominated him for the Malaysia Research Star Award in the category Research and Innovation Excellence, Research in Arts and Applied Arts. He has a deep passion for education and applied linguistic. Language is gorgeous art and education is the foundation of a fruitful life. Dr. Laswan, the floor is yours. Hi. Um, hi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ao, for the introduction. And also thank you to the organizer, especially Dr. Lin, for extending the invitation to me. Um, like uh, I think um, many of you are aware that I'm not the original uh, speaker for this session, 
Um, I am here to replace my colleague, Prof. Amin Zal from University of Malaysia, Kelantan, who cannot make it today uh, because of some of the personal problems regarding flood in the East Coast and all this kind of thing. Uh, so um, I'll try to do my best within uh, the time that I have to prepare for this session, uh, sharing um, the experience and, and what I know uh, from the leadership courses that I attended before. So I basically since yesterday was synthesizing all the uh, prior knowledge that I have with hope that I will be able to share something useful. Um, if not useful, something that will affirm uh, something that you already knew um, in this session. All right, so let me share my screen. Uh, Doctor, oh, okay. I cannot share my screen. I feel like disabled. Um, okay. If you can, can I share? Send the slide to you. Prof, can you um, try now, Prof? Can you try now? Okay, okay, let me. Okay, let me try. This is okay. Can you? Okay, it works now. Yes, yes. It's All works. right. Thank you. Okay, it works now. Okay. Yes, yeah, so uh, I think Dr. Ao has introduced myself just now. So basically, I'm now in Jordan. Um, it's 4 a.m. now and it's winter. It's freezing cold, uh, but I'm happy to be with all of you here. Um, and I hope for a fruitful um, engagement session. So basically, when I was given the topic, staying in sync, fostering understanding among co-workers, what came into my mind is that um, I need to talk about uh, something um, uh, that relates to harmonious relationship between uh, people at work. Because for me, uh, for us to stay in sync, we need to be in a, a harmonious relationship that is free of conflict, which will affect um, uh, understanding between us. All right, so I have divided my speech into three sections. Um, the first one, um, I'll be talking about uh, kind of like theoretical part, but uh, I'm going to make it very easy, which is um, understanding the complex nature of human behavior. And the second part, I'm going to talk about the 5C method uh, for us to develop the understanding, for us to stay in sync. And the last one, I'm going to share the one key strategy which i found kind of like this is quite interesting it's quite um relatable to me as 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 one of the um um you know like people who have gone through different kinds of workplace from UNIDSA, uh from uh, you know when i was in the uk and then now in jordan so i thought like this one is, is, is really relatable so i'm going to share it with you okay so Let's, look at, let's go to the first part, which is understanding the complex nature of human behavior. So basically, uh, I would like to ask um, you, the audience, do you think that it is possible for us to know our co-workers, to know our colleagues at work, to the extent that we really, really can understand their concern, their motivations behind their actions, behind the behavior at work do you think that um do you think that by spending time with them eight hours per day you can get into their mind to you to understand the actual needs uh to act to understand uh the reasons behind the behavior that display that they display to you at workplace do you think you uh, are able to do that we can try you can try, yeah. Um, who, who, who's talking just now? Oh, I, I'm Dr. Farah from Unique, University of Kuala Lumpur. Right, right, Dr. Farah, yeah. So, um, 
And most of the time, when you try to understand the reason behind the behavior displayed by your colleague at work, do you find it easy? Do you find it difficult or, or, or how? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes it's quite difficult to understand people, right? Because sometimes, uh, especially when they did try to deliver the instruction via the maybe the social media, such as what WhatsApp and etc., right? But uh, I think sometimes it's quite difficult for to understand them. But sometimes maybe we can have some chemistry that oh, we know what 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 he trying to instruct us. Uh, so I think it right, depends right. on on how we um accept the, the instruction. Right, right, right. Is it okay? So, <laughs> Sorry. Dr. Farah, yeah, 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 right. It's okay, it's okay. So Dr. Farah was talking about understanding the instruction given by 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 the colleagues, perhaps by the by the superior and all those kind of things. So so what I'm trying to get into is that um Try it because you remember I'm I'm shaping this 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 session today. It's about developing a um, harmonious relationship with colleagues at work. Um, developing a relationship that is free of conflict, so that you can stay in sync, so that you can develop understanding between your co-workers. So basically, um, I agree uh, with Dr. Farawaida. I have the same perspective that um to understand the uh to understand human behavior to understand um what your colleagues do at work towards you towards your boss or perhaps to towards other co-workers to understand um the 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 behavior is it's very very difficult because because um human behavior is very complex in nature but one thing that we need to know that I was made aware, that I'm made aware is though the behavior is complex, the motivations, the motivations, the common needs behind each behavior shown is not complex. Basically, though all humans have complex nature of behavior, that uh, Dr. Ao can behave differently, Dr. Lin can behave differently, Dr. Farahida can behave differently, but there are something in common which influence that those behavior. So this is what we call common needs among people, among, among humans. For example, like if you're Rosenberg, um, the, the, the psychologist you, um, um, told us that we have human have at least uh, 30 basic needs. You know, like, um, and I think the first one, I, I'm not going to tell all 30, but, but because I'm very sure everyone is um, familiar with the human uh, basic needs. But then just let me recap a few things. The first one is kind of like the survival needs. These are the needs for uh, physical physical needs, the water, the food, um, um, shelters, and all those kind of things. And then we also have the uh, relational need, the need to be loved, the need to be respected, the need to be valued, and you know, all this kind of thing. And then also um, the spiritual need, the need for us to to be connected to people, to to the spiritual aspect, the our, our creator, and all those kind of things. And then we have many many more needs, which I'm I'm very sure you are, all are very familiar with. So why these needs come into uh, place now is because whatever attitude, whatever behavior that we see at our workplace, they are basically derived by this common need. So in order to understand the complex nature of behavior at workplace um, is for us to be able to understand the need behind this behavior. If we are able to understand the need behind behind this behavior, we are in a good position to have an improved relationship with our colleagues at work, which will elevate, which will foster the understanding between us. So, yes, um, human behavior is complex, but the motivation, the need that drives that behavior it's not complex, it's simple, and it's relatable to us because humans share the common basic needs. Okay, let's look at this scenario, for example. Um, you have um, children, you have people, you have youngsters who go, uh, who 
try to study very, very, very hard. For example, to go to Harvard, to go to the South Malaya, to go to Jordan, to go to UK to study. These people burn the midnight oil uh, <coughs> just to earn um, um, certificate to be successful in their life. And in the other parts of the world, in the world where they are torn uh, with um, problems, conflict, war, you see a group of children are fighting. Um, they develop their skills to kill people. They develop their skills to protect the country and all those kind of things. Those are the complex behavior. You are seeing now, in my example now, I'm giving you two different um, uh, youngsters, both are youngsters, but in two different contexts, and they have two um, behavior. One uh, 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 for there's also insist but trying to defend yourself and people are trying to And another one is gaining respect by defending their countries, by, by trying to preserve their, their, their tradition, their culture, their country, and all those kind of things. But in the end, both groups want to be respected. So these are the common needs that we have as humans. So in order for us to understand the complex nature of human, we need to go beyond that behavior. What drives? the behavior and when we are able to see the need behind the behavior then we will start to um, we will start to understand why this individual behaved that way and coming to this realization that um, that you need to understand the human behavior by looking at the basic needs um, i told you it will put you in a very in a better position to have an improved relationship with your coworkers. For example, like um, one day when you go to work, when you go to the university, for example, and you have your friends who, who suddenly um, refuse to contribute, for example, who suddenly become very angry to you or suddenly who talk, um, kind of like very openly deconstructing their own values in front of you. So those are behavior. What we need to understand is the reason behind this behavior, why he or she is behaving this way. What are the needs that is not fulfilled in that person that you need to understand in order for you to elicit better behavior from the people? Is it the need to be respected that is not fulfilled? Is it the need to be valued? So, so those are the, those kind of things. So when you understand the behavior through understanding the needs that are not fulfilled, which lead to that behavior, then your actions as one of the co-workers is trying to fulfill the, those, those unfulfilled needs so that you have a better workplace, so that you are uh, uh, in a better sync with your colleague. Up to this point, do you get what I'm trying to say? I'm, I'm really 
uh, worried that I'll be talking without making any sense to you. So, so uh, I'll stop for a while here. I want to listen from you guys. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Uh, anyone? Uh, Prof Adi. Yes. Hi. <laughs> so, Prof Adi, hi, hi, let me, hi. Let me, yeah, let me just um um just um uh, uh, get your insight on um um so far what I've gathered from this disc uh, this 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 discourse. Uh, you know, so right. basically, what um I think to put it in a nutshell. Uh, to just summarize everything, would you say that basically we go in with different um, behavioral patterns, we go in with different mentalities in the workplace, uh, but knowing that all of us are actually ultimately trying to achieve a similar objective, having the same goals uh, makes it easier for us to professionally come to a compromise and, and just understand that we are, you know, we're all there to achieve, you know, um, um, you know, the ultimate goal, you know, especially in terms of education, it is ultimately for student development. So whatever we feel about each other is irrelevant and needs to just be thrown out the window so that we can work together in harmony. Brilliant. Bri uh, who, who's, who's talking, by the way? You recap uh, everything very well. Thank you so person, much. Yeah. From, uh, this is Jared. Yeah, <laughs> Jared yeah. I'm Jared from uh, yeah. Methodist College, Kuala Lumpur. Wow. Good, yeah. good, good. Thank you, Jared. Yeah. Sure. So I'm happy that yeah. my message is delivered. Oh, definitely. <laughs> because because well. what you're saying, yeah. because what you're saying really strikes a chord with me. I think it's so, you know, pertinent and in, in all our workplaces today. Mm. Yeah, okay, definitely. Good, good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Jared. So, so basically, the take-home message for this theoretical part is that um, to understand the human behavior, go beyond the behavior. You should look into what drives this behavior, identify the common needs, and try to fulfill those needs so, have, so that you have a, a harmonious relationship that is progressive. All right. So sometimes the common needs can be a little bit ambiguous. You don't know where, whether, you, you, for example, um, if you see revenge, you know, if you see, if you see colleagues taking revenge, uh, do, do you feel that, um, is it a common need to, to, to have revenge, you know? So in order for you to identify the common needs, always ask yourself, um, if she is taking revenge, is taking revenge is also my common needs. So if it's not common, if it's if not of your interest, then it's not a common need of human behavior. Because all humans, their needs are, are positive. The needs to be loved, the need to be respected, the, the need to be to be to be valued. If you feel like the need is trying to make people uh, feel pain, the need uh, is trying to make people feel sad, those are not common needs. So taking revenge is not a common need because um, it is for him, but it is not for me. So it's not a common need. But actually, you need to go beyond that because when you take revenge, for example, you are trying to make other people understand those are the actual needs. Trying to make those people understand, for example, you cause this personal suffering to me, and now I'm going to do the same to you so that you understand the same feeling that uh, that I was uh, that I, I was feeling, for example. So so it, so the common needs are always positive. You know, it's like it, so if you think revenge is one of the common needs, then you are not on the right. Um, line of thinking you need to think more and more and more until you find the common needs which cause that behavior all right so well so um those are yeah so so basically this recap everything um jared has summarized to me yes human behavior is complex but their motivations and needs are not so we all share common needs you have this in mind take uh, this message home whenever you see the the behavior things of the the common needs and work on those common needs this 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 realization this acceptance will definitely put you in a better place for you to have a progressive harmonious relationship at work <clears throat>
So, okay, so now um, I want to move on to the second part of my speech. All right, so I'm going to talk about the method. Okay, so this is the five six method, the five C method, um, in order for you to foster understanding, in order for you to develop um harmonious relationship that is free of conflict so that you can stay in sync with your colleagues at work all right so so this is by um um Edison, Edison in 2017 i i found out that oh this 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 seat, this five seat method um is really relevant to me you know um you know i'm i'm not young um and I'm not that old, but I'm 38 years old. But then I'm I I I I'm lucky to be uh, able to experience different positions, different lifestyles, and at my workplace. You know, at times, you know, um, it was a moment before long times ago where all the time I took the attacking seat at my workplace, and there are also times where I always take the self-doubt seat, times where I have the mindful seat, the mere cut seat, the detective seat, the giraffe seat. So I'm going to explain to you basically what um, these seats are all about and, and, and how, it can, how, it, it is, how they are related to the topic of the day. So basically the five seats, um, um, is actually trying to tell you to own your behavior, to own your behavior at work. So basically, you are responsible of your own behavior at work. Um, um, let's look at the the the, the attacking seat. Okay, so okay, just take this for example. Like um, when I okay, you know, let me just recall my um um a situation, right? So so before this, you know, uh, an institution when I was leading a research project. So I had someone, I invited to be one of my group members to be um, in the research project. And um, one day I um, went to see him to discuss about the research project and everything has been planned in advance um, it's not kind of like a sudden meeting between me and him to discuss about this project. But when I knock the door, when uh, when I open <clears throat> the door, I saw this guy uh, was sitting down on the chair, um, not even acknowledging my presence as a research leader in front of him who come with all the files, um, um, uh, a stack of paper to discuss about the the the, the, the research, <clears throat> and at that time I have five options. I have these five options. Which seat I want to take in and and facing this one guy in front of me, whom I have been kind enough to invite him to be with me, uh, um, in a secure research project, in a, a big research project. All right. So I I can have the attacking seat, you know, kind of like when I was when I reached the room, and I saw him sitting down on his phone, not even talking to me, not even acknowledging me, not even coming me to his room. It's my career at work. So I have these five options. I can do the attacking seat. The attacking seat. I can just at that time scold him, border and blah 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 blah, blah attacking seat. I if I'm I'm here standing in front of you for two minutes already, uh, trying to discuss me with me, and you are on your phone. What's more important than this um this seventy eight thousand um research grant? You know we are supposed to discuss blah blah blah. blah. I can straight away attack him. Mm -hmm. Um, that's the first option that I have, and then the second option that I have to take the self doubt seat. It's kind of like. I can stand in front of him. Um, I, I can have this kind of self-doubt. This person does not welcome me to his office to discuss about this research proposal. proposal. 
perhaps because he sees me, he views me as an ineffective, as an inefficient research leader. Or perhaps he doesn't want to be uh, in this research project anymore because I'm not a good research partner. Or perhaps it's because he found out that I'm, I'm not capable of, of doing this research. So I can take the second seat, you know? The first seat, the attacking seat, and the second seat, the self-doubt seat. <clears throat> or I can take the third seat, which is the meerkat seat. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with meerkat. Meerkat is an animal in, in Southern Africa. Mostly they are in Southern Africa when they can sit, feel, but they only move their head. Maybe it can be like for one hour, for two hours, just observing their surrounding. So I can be there and, and taking the state, for example, like, um, uh, what, why, why, why is he behaving that way? Why he doesn't welcome me? Uh, have I done something wrong? You know, I will be keep questioning myself, but then slightly better than self doubt. Now I'm not, I'm not mercilessly blaming myself, doubting myself, but then I'm 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 conscious now. I'm I'm being mindful, trying to understand why this person this morning behaved uh to me like this. All right. And then I can also have uh, I also have the option to take the detect state, the detective state. So this is where I'm trying to investigate. Um, when I want to look into myself, um, uh, what can I do? Um, how, how, you know, what's the problem? And then you started to find answers to your curiosity when you take the third seat. You know, all the questions that you ask when you are at, at the conscious seat, you are trying to answer in the fourth seat, the detective seat. You are trying to detect things to make sense of the problem. So. I can also take the fifth seat, which is the giraffe seat. Giraffe seat is, is actually um, the most powerful seat. And why it is said giraffe is because if you are aware, giraffe has the biggest heart of all land animals. So this is fact. Um, giraffe has the biggest seat, uh, biggest heart of all land animals. And it also has um, uh, the longest neck. So by having giraffe as a symbol for giraffe seat, that means you are in a seat, in a mind, in a position where you can see things more comprehensively, having a biggest heart, trying to be empathy. And when you have this seat, what matters to you is to connect to that people. Regardless of whatever happens, you are there, you will own anything that you do, anything that you say, for you to connect with the people. And this is what we need at Workplace. We will do everything to connect the people. And as I'm trying to understand this person by putting myself in a giraffe seat, kind of like what is very important to him that I've been standing here for five minutes and he is still on his phone. He does he disrespect me as a research leader. He's very young. I'm an experienced researcher, more experienced than him. You know, I'm I'm trying to understand why is he behaving this way, you know? And and all of a sudden he showed me his handphone. He showed me his handphone and and he just posted a Facebook status saying like, I am very, very grateful to be in one team with Prof. Adi Ratzuan in this research project, one of the nominees of Malaysia Research Star Award by Clarivate um, Analytics. Wow. You know, can you imagine if I take the attacking seat straight away when he ignores me, I will just destroy everything. I will just destroy the relationship. I will create the conflict. I will stop being in sync with this person when he is very, very important to make my research progress. So, so do you understand what I'm telling you now? Is that all these five seats um, 
is actually telling you to own your behavior and try to take your time thinking and deciding, slow down your action um, and decide which seat you want to take every time you are faced with unfavorable behavior at workplace so that you can better uh, stay in sync with your co-workers and that's uh, enable that's enable you to develop um, understanding between you and the challenge in uh, this five state method is to find balance you cannot be always sitting at the giraffe seat you cannot be always sitting at the detective seat the mindful seat the attacking seat you need to find balance know where to take a seat and own your behavior uh, is that clear so far um yeah i hope i'm i, I hope i'm putting something in your mind for you to at least uh, think about it when we finish finish this session all right so i think i'm done with the second part um uh, i don't know what time we have uh, how many minutes do we have now uh, actually already over ah okay 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 so let me just finish with one thing um the last point the last part of my speech which is that one help, helpful strategy um this has been told by many many people around me whom i uh, see as a very uh, successful leader which is do not take things personally so um anytime when whenever you go to the workplace and then you see people get angry uh, don't speak to you don't invite you for lunch and all those kind of things don't take things personally the first thing that should come to your mind is it is not about me it is not about me so you don't take things personally they get angry not because of me because they have some common needs that are not fulfilled they do not invite me for lunch not because they don't like me but because they know um the food is not suitable for me for example don't take things personally but you cannot always all the time think it's not about me it's not about me it's not about me because in the end you'll be ignorant so after you have um you need to know when to think it is now about me when it is about you what you need to do is that you need to speak up but at the same time be meticulous enough to have your discursive responses not to blame them so speak up for example i feel i feel a bit sad um uh, that i i wasn't there in the lunch and all those kind of thing but do not blame your do not blame the other person speak up so that your your needs um are heard are visible by, by by the people uh so i think that's all i don't want to take any longer i thought i'm going to talk just for about 10 minutes <laughs> all right so so thank you thank you yeah thank you thank you very much uh dr laswan for your uh, inspiring speech and thank you for introducing to us the five six ideas <laughs> we will learn to take the giraffe seat with the biggest heart okay thank you <sighs> So um, now uh, we will take a, a short break. Okay, we will come back by 9.50. Thank you. Nineteenth October 2006 witnessed the establishment of a platform through the agreement of Memorandum Jama'a Mantri, which states the need for a training and development platform for tertiary education leaders. The Ministry of Higher Education is entrusted to develop the platform as it is deemed fit for MOHE to nurture, train and sustain the skills and competencies of the higher education institution leaders. With that said, are kept as an agency under the ministry was born. Known as Higher Education Leadership Academy, are kept, or in the full form of its Malay name, Academy Kepimpinan Pendidikan Tinggi, has been playing its role through its objective for almost 20 years. Are kept aims to develop leadership talents and potential in higher education institutions, HEIs, to lead their institutions more effectively, especially to face the challenges of global higher education in the future. 
In addition, a CAPT believes the enhancement of leadership must be holistically addressed, not just among academics, but also to cater to administrators' professionalism and ensure competent leaders and administrators are produced. Leadership development is essential at all levels to nurture a reliable talent pool for the long-term sustainability of higher education excellence. Located in the educational hub of Banda Enstek Negri Sambila, our CAPT boasts over 30 acres of sprawling compound, which houses high standard facilities comprising an administrative building, halls, auditorium, lecture rooms, four-star accommodation, sports facilities, dining hall. These facilities have witnessed various impactful programs being held with prominent figures present. Akert has conducted a countless number of international forums and upskilling programs for higher education institutions, including 20 public universities and TVET agencies and institutions. It holds a huge responsibility to provide training programs and add value to the current expertise amongst the board of directors, high and mid-level administration offices in higher education institutions. To ensure continuous enhancement of its programs, our CAPT has extended its role via strategic partnerships and collaborations with various institutions with many more impactful programs in the pipeline, our CAPT will surely continue to deliver on its promise as the preferred expert center in higher education leadership development towards producing respected, competent, and excellent leaders for the betterment of higher education institutions and to fulfill the national agenda. Thank you for staying with us in the forum. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you the second speaker, Professor Dr. Karija Awang. Professor uh, Dr. Karija is a professor at University of Malaya. She obtained her PhD in natural products chemistry from the University of Rennes, Descartes, Paris, France. She was an expert panel of uh, knowledge transfer program at the Ministry of Education. She was the head of the Center for Community Networks at University of Malaya. She is currently the coordinator of International French Malaysian Natural Products Laboratory with CNRS. She is one of the 108 University of Malaya researchers listed among world's top 2% scientists by Stanford University 2022. The rank of a knight in the Order of Palm Academic and an Honorable Consultant Panel of the School of Malay Traditional Medicine, Genovasi University College. Professor Khadija, the floor is yours. Okay, tak pun nanti dulu, nanti kan saya minta. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and salam sejahtera to all. Uh, everybody can can be in touch, yeah? Okay, is everything okay? Okay, that's good. So, um, firstly, I would like to thank. Saya ingin ucapkan terima kasih. Jutaan terima kasih kepada pihak uh, penganjur, khususnya ACAP dan sahabat saya Dr. Azizah yang telah menjemput saya untuk memberi syarahan pada hari ini untuk actually to share ya, untuk berkongsi pengalaman uh, uh, dalam semasa uh, kerja saya ya apa yang saya hadapi ya untuk memastikan supaya uh, kita dapat bekerjasama dengan baik dengan semua sahabat-sahabat kita di dalam uh, tempat kerja kita ya ini adalah apa yang telah Dr Azizah telah utarakan kepada saya ya jadi saya akan saya telah bersetuju untuk sama-sama sharing lah bukannya saya tahu tapi kita sharing ya kita berkongsi insyaallah ya so dengan ini izinkan saya untuk memulakan syarahan saya saya akan mulakan dengan sharing the screen ya sharing the screen sekejap eh. please give me one minute uh, 
Uh, boleh tak tolong, can you please disable the uh, participant screen sharing? Can you please enable it so that I can share the um, presentation slides? Hello? Okay. Yes, please. I think you can do it. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. Terima kasih. Eh. Jadi izinkan saya untuk memulakan syarahan saya. Uh, okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala sayyidina Muhammad. Okay. So the title of the talk today is Staying in Sync, Fostering Understanding Among Co-Workers. Yeah. So... Okay, firstly, I would like to share with you the definition by the Cambridge Dictionary yeah, on understanding. Yeah. Okay, so from the dictionary, yeah, the meaning of understanding yeah, is a positive relationship okay, between two people or groups in which they can feel sympathy for each other. Okay, So uh, from the sentence below that I would like to share with you, we can see the importance of this, of having this understanding. Yeah? Okay, From this sentence, yeah, let us share together. For peace to exist, there need to be a much improved understanding between all the parties concerned. So to have understanding, okay, is very important. Why? Because basically, by understanding each other, we can have peace. We can have harmony. Just like uh, what has been uh, expressed by our first speaker, yeah? we can have harmony between us. Okay. So 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 why so why why do we want harmony? But why we want harmony, we want peace so that we can be together, we can work together to achieve our goals. Okay, be it the goals of a research group or the goals and mission and vision of the uh, department of the university and our country. Okay, so to have peace is very important. Like what the Malaysian have said, yeah? uh, berat sama dipikul, ringan sama the changing. So when we are together, we do not feel the burden to achieve this goal. Okay, so we can achieve it effortlessly. Yeah, uh, because we feel happy to do it together. So we don't feel the burden. Yeah, kita tak complain pun. So kita sama-sama. Yeah, okay, so that's very important. Okay, now next. Okay, uh, from what I believe, from my humble view, yeah, from my, my uh, experience, yeah, the attributes that we should have, that we should practice here yeah, in fostering understanding, yeah, we have to have effective communication and mutual respect among each other, with each other. Okay? So we have to communicate effectively. There's no use talking about something and actually people just listen and they don't really absorb it inside their mind. And it is not reflected in the actions. See, today, we can see that we have a lot of these problems. We communicate, but it's not effectively. Okay? Masuk telinga, like, like the Malay saying says, eh? masuk telinga kiri, keluar telinga kanan. Uh, macam tu saja. Just that. So that's why, so this means that communication has lapsed. Okay? And we must have mutual respect. Once we have mutual respect, once we care for another, for one another, then we will take care of what is the substance that we are communicating with. Oh, my 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 uh, superior is asking me to do this. I will try my best to get it achieved. Oh, my students is saying this and this and this. My staff is saying this and this. I have to take care about this matter. Okay? Jadi tak masuk telinga kiri, keluar telinga kanan. Okay? Today we assume as though we have communicated, but basically we do not really communicate effectively because the effect is not there. Okay? And that is why. Why is it like that? Why why is that so? It's because we don't really respect each other. We don't really understand each other. Okay, so this is what I think we have to practice upon. Eh? Okay, number two, I I always practice. I usually observe 
observe and analyze the people, the surrounding, the situation to understand why a person behave as such. Okay, if somebody says, Halija, that person is A, B, and C. Okay, I take note, but do not be judgmental. Observe, analyze, and try to understand the person, his surroundings, the situations that surrounding him to make him seem to be like that. Okay, because that's perspective from different people. Different people have different perspectives over different people. Yeah, okay. Number three, which is very important, is that we have to realize, we have to understand human nature, like what uh, the first speakers uh, have uh, uh, communicated just now. Yeah, We have to understand human nature. We have to realize human nature. So once we understand this, we are more forgiving and uh, we can accept okay, things much easier. Okay, But we don't just stay there, just, just accepting, that's it. No, we have to do something to improve matter. Okay? And we have to be professional. No matter how much you don't quite like that person, okay, leave it just as there, okay? But when it comes to work, be professional. If you're not happy with him or her, okay, put it aside and get the work done. Okay, that's number one thing. Number two, do not be angry of their people, meaning their staff, their student or whatever, okay? We have to be professional with everybody, okay? The most important thing, we can get the task done. If it cannot be done, we have to think and analyze and be honest with each other why it cannot be done or why it fails and how to improve matter. Okay? We have to be professional. Okay? We are all at the same level. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Regardless of who you are, professor ke, tak professor ke, we are the same. Okay? <laughs> now. Okay, I go back. Mm. Okay, having said all this, can these are theories, these are things that we say, we know that we have to do this. We have no way we have to try to understand people. We know that we have to communicate effectively. We know that we have to be calm and analyze things. But why didn't we do it? Why, why we didn't we do it? We know. Knowing is one thing, but being able to do it is another thing. Today, we know a lot of things. We know a lot of theories. We know a lot of, 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 of steps that we should do this, we should do that, we should do that. But why aren't we able to do it? And if even we prosecute it, why cannot we do it effectively? Why? We have to ask ourselves why. Okay? Why we can open our heart to do those things effectively? Okay? Kenapa? Mengapa? Okay? So that means there is something that is uh, 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 stopping us from doing that, okay? That is something that is stopping us from doing that. So going back to my first slide, yeah? Okay, we have to find peace, okay? Now, before we, we find peace with our colleagues, with the people around us, okay? First and foremost, we have to find peace with our own self. Okay, we ourselves have to be calm. Okay, we ourselves have to be in peace. Then only we can be strong enough to face the situations around us, to face the people around us. Okay, so we have to understand ourselves first before understanding others. We have to understand ourselves first. We have to understand our existence. We have to understand our our being. Okay, ourselves. Yeah. So we know as human beings, we are not just physical. We are also, we have three important parts in our being, okay? In our being, our soul, our body, and our mind, okay? A very famous author, yeah, Deepak Chopra said, when mind, body, and spirit are in harmony or in peace, happiness is the natural result. So once we are in peace with ourselves, once we are happy, then our heart, ni kita berjiwa besar, okay? Our heart is big. We have enough space, okay, to understand others, okay? To accept others. We have enough space within our, our heart, yeah? Within ourselves, okay? Now, how to do that with our soul, kan? Okay, it's good to do prayers, to have gratitude, yeah, every morning kita kata bersyukur, Alhamdulillah lah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, and then 
when we see other things, oh, syukur Allah, uh, we are luckier, we are we are in a position that we can help others, you know. So, bersyukur itu very important. Love, affection, compassion. Okay? So, we have to practice this. Okay? And our body, we have to be healthy. If we, we are not healthy, we cannot do many things. Okay? We cannot have a healthy soul and also mind. Okay? So, we have to have balanced diet. We need to have good exercise routines. We have to have sleep, enough sleep and enough rest. Okay? We have to have a balanced body. And then, with a balanced soul and body, we can have a very balanced mind. Okay? And how to get that? We need to contemplate, meditate. We have to have positive thinking. And with this, we can create understanding within our own self. And then we can emanate this understanding with those around us. Okay? Hence, our family, our colleagues, our peers, our staff, our superiors. Huh? Everybody. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, about uh, on all of these aspects, yeah, I want to take, uh, I will elaborate more on positive thinking. Okay? In our workplace, as leaders, as bosses, okay, as uh, as uh, scientists, as pegawai and everything, eh? we must have positive thinking, okay? We cannot be weak. We must have positive thinking because we are the leaders. We, we, we have to lead, okay? We have to lead, okay? So we have to accept the fact that life is full of trials and tribulations, yeah? Ujian dan dugaan. We can't run away from it. Hmm? But we must rise after each failure and continue to move forward by thinking positive. Okay, and how to be think? How can we think positive? We must know that everything happens. Yeah, Okay, with God's will, and there must be wisdom to everything that happens. We must accept God knows best. Okay, and we have to have holy personal zone with God. We know that if things happen, it is for the betterment. Okay, to ourselves, to our surroundings. But we have to take things positively. Okay? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in his hadith, which I love this very much, yeah? No tiredness, exhaustion, worry, grief, distress, or harm befalls a believer in this world, not even a thorn that pricks him, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah? Expiates some of his sins thereby. Okay? The saying of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, dear friends, if we are tired with our work, we are exhausted, okay? We are worried with our KPI to whatever grief, okay? distress. Understand that if we are patient, if we are calm, and if we face the situation positively, okay? We know that God has already forgiven our sins, okay? So already that is a positive thing, okay? So that means by positive thinking and making positive actions, already we have one. Already we have one, okay? Tak susah pun. Kita dah menang pun. Okay, because life is not just on the earth. It's also the hereafter. So you know why you exist on this earth. Yeah? So, so okay, this is my favorite, uh, my favorite um, philosopher. Okay, he is a philosopher by the name of Jalaluddin Rumi, yeah? He always said, yesterday, I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today, I am wise, so I am changing myself, okay? So, if we want to have a good environment with our peers, with our staff, with our co-workers, okay? It helps us a lot, okay, by changing ourselves first. And what do we mean by changing ourselves first? Number one, we self-analyze ourselves, okay, and with what we see and we observe, do not be judgmental. Okay, that helps a lot, okay. We must have husnuzun, that means bersangka baik, okay, with everybody around us, okay, that's with us. And then we've got, we've got to bersangka baik with him, that what happens, there must be a hikmah within, within, uh, within, uh, with what happens, okay? So there must be something good about things, okay? Yeah? So we have to have husnuzun, 
Okay, not only with our people around us, surrounding us, around us, but most importantly with God. They must be aikmah. So this will make you positive. Okay? And then generous at heart. The Hindustani word is Dilwali. I like this movie. Can Dilwali ni? Okay, so we forgive and forget easily. Okay? We forgive and forget. Okay? Because our heart is happy, so we can have a lot of space to forgive and forget. Okay? I have a lot of space to accept others, their differences. Okay? Uh, uh, celebrate the differences, the diversities. Because this will make our life more colorful. For us researchers, that's very important because it will create ideas. Okay, for me, that's very important. It will create ideas. And from those ideas, we can do a lot of research. We can form a lot of networks. We can publish a lot of papers. We can, uh, after that, we can help our nation further by uh, uh, implementing what we have done in our research. Okay, by putting it into action for our society, for our country. Yeah. But having said that, okay, we understand this. We understand that. Okay. We must stick to our principles, the good principles. We must be principled and tactful in our actions, in our actions. Okay, meaning if we don't agree with something, what our superior said, we don't just say, ah, oh, this is stupid. Don't say like that. We will say, hmm, whatever you said, there is uh, some benefits to it. Okay, I can see the reason. Okay, but however, I think blah 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 blah. You see, maybe this move perhaps is quite unjust to our people, quite unjust to the staff. It's just too much, it's burdening them. Okay, we can say that maybe we have to do things in steps rather than pew, we just say it. Okay, so we have to say it in a very tactful manner. Okay, we have to say what they've done, their effort, in their thinking. Okay, it's good, I can see that, but perhaps we cannot do it now because of the situations around us, because of the capacity of our people is not there. So we have to be to be tactful when we want to talk to our superior when we don't agree with what they say. Okay, for example, eh? Kita tak boleh just cakap like that. And then with our staff, okay? We have to listen to them. Sometimes I always give them some chores to do, blah, 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 blah. And then they say, a prof, uh, you know, this is this, this is, and that. This is not very possible. Okay, then I will counter them. And then I will say, why do you see that? Tell me what you want to see. Tell me what you feel. So I will listen. After that, I will accept some, sometimes. And then at another time, I will, I will, I will accept everything. At, depending on situation. And sometimes I will just say, no, you must try. You must try. You must not give up. It's not impossible. So depending on times, you have uh, to act upon with great understanding of your people, okay? With your staff. Because we have to move forward. No matter what, we have to move forward, right? So how to move forward in a manner that's harmonious between our people. So in having said that, okay, I have actually ended my talk, okay? Thank you very much for your kind attention. If there is any question, I can uh, I can uh, entertain them, inshallah. Thank you very much. Terima kasih, yeah? thank, um, thank you very much, Professor Khadija, for an inspiring speech. I think we have to always keep the positive thinking, <laughs> okay? As uh, this is also will help us to live better and work better with our colleagues. Okay, uh, without further ado, so the, I will pass the floor control to the moderators, uh, uh, Professor Dr. Joseph Anand uh, Tangaraj and Associate Very Professor good. Dr. Aziza Mainan. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this online forum on compassionate leadership. And myself is Prof. Anand from University Technical Malaysia, Malacca. And my friend, uh, PM Dr. Aziza from University Malaya. We too will be assisting you in this online forum session as a moderator. Huh? So our role of moderators here is to bridge between the speaker and then the participants mainly. So we have a few things to ask based on the session and then some pre-planned questions. But we also, at the same time, 
by looking at your chat box and if you have any questions either generally or specific to the speakers you can highlight and then we will take it over and then we will pass it to the speakers for today and then we will get the answers and we continue our forum and most probably i will be focusing on questions that is posted to associate professor uh, dr razwan and then my colleague my friend uh, pm dr aziza will be picking up the questions which is related to prof kalija so this way we can share our workload so very simple huh? so as good as a compassionate leadership among ourselves okay so maybe i can start with uh, our first speaker uh, dr razwan uh, first of all we are sincerely uh, thanking you huh? so your time and then your efforts so unfortunately we couldn't uh, bring out our previous speaker prof amir from umk because that particular areas are you know heavily affected by flood and then the internet connections were all poor and then uh, we were trying a kind of whether we can postpone or not but you know we decided that many participants are interested and then you know they are all very keen and thrust to see this particular one so we decided and then now uh, the next job is somebody we have to replace not just replacing you know you know one to one but we need to get a good speaker and then you know who can really share his knowledge and we found that this is a very right person and i should thank to our you know leader for this project uh, dr norliana for immediately uh, so this was all done only on yesterday you know not uh, quite far away so yesterday we have decided and then finally we found you know something like the right person on the right time uh, thank you dr azwan for your time efforts and he said you know he is in the early morning now 4 am uh, so just uh, for us he still okay so thank you very much for your especially the ideas that you also shared especially on the five seat and then one good strategy okay so i will just uh, ask myself or maybe you know put myself in a floor even i myself is an expatriate staff here in malaysia but i'm here already about 17 years and then i have an experience with the private university before and currently i am in the public university but when we moving along with our friends or colleagues as a peers uh, in the compassionate leadership we will find something uh, not uh, maybe we may acceptable in terms of hierarchy uh. hierarchy meaning to say uh, for example myself and dr azwan are you know friends in the same faculty or maybe in the same university and when he move up to a position whereby he become the ketua jabatan or maybe dekan or maybe you know some kind of administrative positions then the it not the relationship changes but the way have to be changed right i cannot you know talk to him anymore like the same way as like just friends or maybe you know the policy matters and sometimes you know we may have a questions to ask but it cannot be like uh, anymore as a friends you know it has to go through like a hierarchy and that's where i found that sometimes we may feel a bit uh, gap or maybe we find it uh, there could be a little bit uh, i'm not saying that totally uh, people are moving away or maybe they are not entertaining etc but this is where sometimes we can see that there is a gap so in your experience could you please kindly share with us uh, how this hierarchy especially in the compassionate leadership needs to be handled or maybe you can share your experience or maybe you can say a few words how it could be i think this is where most of us may be wondering uh, he was my friend you know comes to me with coffee every day everything is this is most of the time but some other time it may be also going to the other way around now this time it's not me looking at you differently but people other other people looking at us differently you see now he become the whatever be the position at kj or dekan and now he is you know fostering this particular person very often but not to us evenly or you maybe so there may be we can see some kind of difference could you please address on this dr azwan thank you yes uh thank you prof anan from utem uh, utem utem right uh, yes. yeah um um thank you for putting up something that i'm very very sure that is relatable to many of us here the audience if you have been at workplace for some time you will be having kind of like 
are your friends, um, your colleagues whom you have been working together in the research group, and then suddenly he goes up, um, you know, to a higher position, and then you start to, to, to you know, kind of like receive less time to, to talk to them, you know, kind of like, but actually, um, these all goes back to the um where are you where are we going to put the professional versus um personal boundary yeah so 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 basically you know like like for me um even if my friend even even he is my close friend for example we have been working in frgs for five frgs but then when it comes to work um i will still be addressing him professionally for example if i need something that is about work though he is my friend um and now he's for example the vice chancellor i will not be asking him work related questions after office hour because i know that um professional needs to be uh, you know professional matters need to be done professionally regardless of your relationship with them so basically it's kind of like deciding um when it's personal and when it's professional you know i have the same experience exactly the same experience with you you know before this you know the former vice chancellor of unita he used to be my friend you know kind of like we work together in research project we publish papers together and that was before he was appointed as a vice chancellor no the deputy vice chancellor of academy and soon after he went into that position you know kind of like um replying my text become less frequent and all those kind of thing but then um i i never take um the attacking seat, you know. I never judge him. I I never attack him. You know, kind of like I'm 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 I I have the big heart seat. You know, trying to understand he's busy and all those kind of things. So this goes back to what Prof Halija has said. It's all about uh, positive thinking. It's all about um trying to see things from 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 a positive perspective. And I think this is the key of all compassionate leadership when you are trying the uh, to see uh, not what's wrong with the people, but then, um, you know, kind of like to, you know, kind of like to see things um, in a way that it will give you a satisfying uh, interpretation of what's going on. So I think that's the key of, of, of all, all this. But I'm very sure in this kind of things, you know, like, um, even though it become the conversation become less frequent, the text reply become less frequent, but because we used to be his friends, so we used to be close together. Whenever we have uh, problems, you know, uh, professional is there as a professional, but trust me, someone who who has a big heart will not let his friend sink alone, especially when he or she is in a position that he can uh, take uh we off off from the from the from the drowning yeah. thank you Prof Anand I hope I answered your question thank you thank you very much so I think uh PM Dr Aziza can uh... Bismillahirrahmanirrahim assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh good morning everyone uh, thank you, Prof. Halija, uh, for being with us today. Um, I'd like to echo uh, some of the um, uh, sharing that uh, you shared with us uh, just now in your presentation. Uh, so perhaps you did answer, uh, you know, the, the first question that I'm about to, to, to ask, but maybe uh, you want to expand on it. Uh, you mentioned that uh, to make this work, i.e. to stay in sync and fostering understanding among the co-workers, it is um, very important uh, for us to first build or promote or inculcate some good uh, characters. You mentioned about not being judgmental, to be kind uh, among the co-workers. Now, I think my question is, how do you even begin to promote these good characters among the co-workers because I think uh, it's something that sometimes we are not uh, we are oblivious to 
uh, of our behavior and we may not realize that we may not uh, act accordingly. So there must be some kind of continuous awareness that we should be kind and non-judgmental and all the good stuff that you mentioned. So what are your thoughts on this? What kind of activities maybe we can actually do so that everyone is aware that they have to continuously uh, be kind uh, to everyone? Uh, thank you, Aziza. Uh, if you ask me, the first thing that you have to, to do, okay, everything that we want to do, everything and anything, if you want to be successful and you want to be um, sure of anything that you want to do, okay, okay the first thing, okay, for me, you must relate yourself to God. This is for me, okay? When you do things, that means you will never lose anything. You will not lose by being good. Okay? Because today people will calculate. Okay, if I do this, I do this, do I get this? If I do this, I do this, I don't get this. You see what I mean? Okay? Number one. So you relate to everything that whatever good that you do, okay? Even if everybody is mocking at you with the good that you do, if people are saying you are stupid to do that good thing because nobody appreciates you, you know God will appreciate you. So keep on doing the good thing, okay? Because life on earth is just for a while. The real life is in the year of hell. So whatever you earn here, you will earn a lot in the year of hell. So you know already that you win. So that you have to put in your heart, in your mind, positive. Be positive. Okay? That's number one. Number satu, memang macam tu. Okay? Now, number two, we have to understand reality also. Okay? I always talk to my my young my young colleagues my young colleagues. Okay, we have to be compassionate. We have to understand this and that. Okay, we must know. We must be honest with ourselves. Yeah, and the surroundings. Okay, of our capacity. Okay, kita jangan kadang-kadang overdo certain things. Sometimes one one we can be okay. Usually the most important thing is that for us to be moderate. Okay. I always remember when Rasulullah said, you work as hard as though you're going to live forever, but you pray as though you're going to go tomorrow. So what does that mean? He's trying to tell us that we must be moderate. And moderation for everybody, the, the ruler is, the, 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 the calculation is different. What is moderate to you may slightly differ to what is moderate to me. Okay? You put in your goals. Okay, what is the moderate way of getting to it? Okay? We must accept that we make mistakes. Okay, but we must also understand that if we if we, if we learn from the mistake and we look at it positively, actually it is a plus to us. It helps us to be better. It strengthens us. For example, our immune system. Okay, when we get sick, it's not all bad. It is actually to train our immune system to strengthen our immune system, so that when we have other problems later with other attacks from viruses or whatever, our body is ready. Okay, so all these trials and tribulations is actually strengthening us. If we take it positively, kita besar kat Tuhan, kita buat, we respect everybody, okay? We must be principled, okay? We must, we are understanding, but we must be principled. Like I tell you, we have to be firm, but when we want to put forward our, our ideas, our belief, we have to do it in a way that it's in a very tactful manner. Amat berbudi bahasa. Then we don't hurt others. We might have hurt them a little bit, but then we know. As professionals, we accept that, okay? Professional people will accept that. Yeah, so we have to move forward. Yeah, kita mesti move forward, and we have to understand today. Okay, like, like many people ask me today. Okay, Prof. Okay, you want to be compassionate. You want to be generous. You want to be understanding. Supposedly you're a boss. Okay, and you have your young staff with you. You have your students. Okay, okay. But to get your PhD, you need to have two publications. For example, you cannot say, "Oh, you don't have like to publish two publications." I understand your situation. This and that. Of course, we understand the situation, but we must find a solution. Um, so even if you want to finish your PhD in six years, it's okay. I don't mind. I will be patient to be with you as a supervisor. I will teach you and I want you to learn, but you still have to publish too, whether you finish within three years or four years or six years. You see what I mean? You still have to reach your goal, but you reach your goal within the capacity that you can, that, that you have. Okay. You you are doing that to yourself, to your colleagues, to your staff, to your student. Understand them. 
but what has to be met still has to be met. Okay, rather than we go to the to the upper the chancery, why two papers? Can you reduce it to one paper? No, don't do that. You you help them. Okay, you help them to achieve that two papers. You build the strength in them so that they are sure they are uh, uh, they have a very uh, very uh, a strong confidence within themselves that they can do it. That is what we should do. Okay, understanding does not mean that you have to, you say, oh, tak payah lah, tak payah buat. No, does not mean that. But you do it in a manner that is within your capacity. Okay, and that capacity can be improved. How do you improve that? Build your heart, build it, build your, build ourself, within ourself. Okay, when I say build within ourself, meaning you must understand, you build your mind, your soul, and your physical. Okay? Huh? You can't think well if you sleep at three o'clock and you wake up at five o'clock. You can't think well. Okay, maybe once in, uh, in, in two or three months, it's okay. You have situations like that, but not every day. Okay? Huh? You have to take the, the fresh air. You have to go for exercise. You have to keep up. Okay? Yeah? Uh, you, you be generous. You do something good, then you feel good. When you feel good, you got good molecules coming out from your body, isn't it? So you have to do that. You have to, to feed your mind with good thinking, good uh, good readings and all that. Okay? So, kita kena buat macam tu. So, I hope I under, I, 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 I have answered your question. Aziza? Is all it okay? Right, um, Do yes, you think I answered uh, your question? <laughs> somewhat, Prof. Uh, uh -huh. You know, maybe if I can just uh, extend a little bit, you know, yes, like yes. Uh, mm -hmm. within the department, for example, uh -uh. how do you, you know, maybe sort of like campaign the good characters? Do you have, you know, like ever uh, advertisement, uh, you know, outside uh, the building, inside the building, everywhere in the building saying, be nice, smile, uh, you know, be kind. Will, will that be, you know, make uh, the people, you know, conscious? Uh, oh, I okay. need to smile. Yeah, okay, you need to smile. Okay, you, you can put that. You can put advertisement, things like that. Semua tu boleh, okay? You want to write, you, uh, you, you want to show your, your uh, from the media, social media, you can show cartoons or, or actings or whatever, you can do that. Okay, you can do that. That is like advertisement like you said. Yes, yes. But you can make it more effectively if every one of us, okay, we do it within our small community. You start it first with your own staff, two, three people, can? Eh? Your own students, two, three people, can? Betul tak? And then go to the head of department for your office, okay? Go and talk to them. Smile at them. Talk to the head of department. Talk to the people in your labs, okay? For example, okay? You start it first. So once you've started it, okay? The others will follow. The others will follow. Okay, it's good. We are human beings, Aziza, Okay? Communication is very important. And human communication is very, very, very important. Okay, if you ask me, can Prof, you want to give a uh, talk. Remember when you asked me in the beginning? I always, I always told you that I prefer face-to-face. -face. Can, face-to-face. Uh, -face. Because it is more effective. Just that. Okay? It is more effective. So if you want other people to do good, you do it first. You do it first. You do it first in the small level who is within your, 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 your group. Lepas tu, you go to the Jabatan. Okay, and then contact with the people in the faculty. Okay, uh, and then we do something together. Okay, we start to do it first. So once you do it, others will follow. Others will follow. Don't wait until others do first. No, you start first. You start first. And human contact is very important, not just advertisements. You see what I mean? Human contact is very important. It's just like I said, Assalamualaikum Aziza on WhatsApp. How do you feel when I say, Assalamualaikum Aziza, I angkat tangan, I peluk you. Pagi -pagi. How do you feel? It's different, isn't it? Eh? Different, right? So that human contact is very important. Today, in this, this world of, of high technology, what we are lacking is, we are lacking to be human, actually. We have too much artificial. Artificial, inter, artificial intelligence, artificial feeling, everything is on screen. We don't meet, we don't talk. Okay? We don't try to understand each other. So we understand a lot of theories, but when it comes to implementation, we are not very, very successful. That I must tell you. That is why today, if I ask everybody around me, ada saja uh, rasa sedih, ya? rasa terpinggir, okay? rasa tak puas hati. Betul tak? But 
even with all the technology, why can't we communicate effectively? That's why I said just now, effective communication. So if you cannot communicate with the keyboard, you go and see that person. But before you see that person, prepare yourself first. Strengthen yourself first. Be calm. Okay? Have an open heart. Yeah? Okay? Tenang. Then you go and see. Okay? So if you think something is unfair or something is something is missing, there is lack lacking of uh, interactions within the people in the department and so on. Okay, if you think there is a problem, you go and see the superior and let's discuss. And you go and see the people that's working with you, the, the staff. I always go to see the uh, the the supporting staff. Okay, I'm close to them. I will have a chat with them. What do you want? What do you think? Do you think I'm arrogant? Do you think I'm this? Do you think I'm that? If I'm wrong, please tell me. You see what I mean? So with different people, the way you interact is different. Like just now, there's a question of hierarchy, right? So when you, you interact with your superior, you must have a certain formality, but you must show with honesty what you want. You put forward tactfully. Dengan hormat. And if you want to be your friend, bila you rasa you nak gelak-gelak, you nak ketawa, you nak ni, ajak dia keluar makan, keluar minum. You see, I have friends who are on top and they said, and sometimes I ask them for lunch or dinner, can they say they are so grateful because they are so lonely up there. They want to talk to us, actually. It's not easy to be a leader. It's not easy. Okay? So talk to them. Try to understand their feelings, you know? Uh, but kita selalu kepikir, oh, kenapa macam-macam ni? Why? Why betul? We prepare ourselves and then go and see that person first. Tanya nicely. I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. Why do you think it's like this? I feel that you are not treating me very well. I think I feel that I'm not this one. You check up truthfully. Tapi check up cara baik. And then you will realize that, eh, this is not what I think before. And then you can be happy to go and do your job. You can be more positive and you can be more successful, inshallah. Thank you, Prof. This, this is my view. This is my view because this is also what, what I do, actually. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, back to you, Prof. Joseph. Okay. Okay, thank you, Prof. Kalija. Now, I want to ask something, uh, sharing, and then maybe ask like a question to our speaker, Dr. Razwan. Okay, uh, as Prof. Kalija also pointed out, now the human contact is very important. And then only you can be in good. But I'm assuming that we are all like a tertiary educators. Huh? I mean, mostly in the university educators. But here, what the difference I can see, especially between the other group of focus and then the university staff, we are actually not connected physically. Okay, meaning to say, if I'm assuming that there is a school teachers, the school teachers have only one staff room. Maybe, you know, everybody comes in the same room in the morning and then say good morning or whatever. And then, oh, how are you? And then what's your plan? You know, everything to be shared. And it's like a close one. And even I can see if you go to a small department, whichever it is, but when it comes to university atmosphere, being a lecturer, huh? for example, teachers here, and we are kind of separated. You know, we used to meet sometimes once in three months during the exam board meeting, or maybe, you know, the math uh, measure at my uh, faculty board meeting, or some kind of, you know, Senate. And we are already going with the kind of, you know, we have already something to do for that particular meeting. Exam board meeting means I'm busy with, you know, my how the questions I need to moderate. So all those things. And we have uh, less, less time, very less time, you know, being uh, together and the human contact, uh, as what uh, uh, Prof. Khalija mentioned now, right? The physical or maybe, you know, one-to-one -one communication is lacking, especially in the tertiary educators or maybe the university staff. Whereas uh, other places, uh, at least we can have a time, you know, tea time, something like that. So sometimes... Maybe my friend is just next to my door or maybe, you know, one door next to me. But still, I don't know what's going on to them or her. Until otherwise, we see in the WhatsApp group that so-and-so happened, whether it is positive or negative. Even if, the you know, they get a new baby or maybe new house or maybe even they are sick and whatever, you know, even some of the close relatives passed away. But sometimes we don't know, even though they are just next to us, but we come to know through the WhatsApp group or maybe some kind of official notice from the Info University, something like that, right? And this makes these days, we are actually moving uh, moving uh, far away. Sometimes I used to be very close with my friend who is very far away in overseas. 
but I'm not too close to my colleague or maybe peers who are just next door, you know. I mean, I can say this is practically. So even when we go like, you know, uh, anything, now we are looking at all our mobile phone or maybe smartphone. Uh, I mean, you know, how many steps I'm walking in. You know, I'm not spending time with my enough friends or even family sometimes, right? I mean, these days, even if you go to a restaurant, everybody order the food and then we are watching our mobile phone. So this is the culture now. So being in this particular one, even with our family and friends are like this, and in the university atmosphere or maybe in the working atmosphere, how to build, you know, being sync or, you know, being together, uh, especially human contact. Uh, do you have anything to share on this particular one? How we can improve on that? Sorry, Prof, you are muted. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, thank you, Prof Anand. All right. So I think, I think, um, right, um, I think many of us face similar problems, similar, similar scenario. But I think this goes into kind of like, um, you know, if you watch that talk, all those kind of things, like there are many, many speakers, many, many leaders are uh, talking about differentiating between friends and colleagues. Or right? kind of like, um, so I, I think like um, for me, it's fine. Uh, this is my, my, my take personally. For me, it's fine for me that I don't know um, a lecturer next to me, what they eat, whether they give birth or, or all those kind of things for me because because they are my colleagues instead of my friends as long as our professional relationship goes in harmony. But at the same time, I want to share my experience here in Jordan since I work um, at the embassy with all the diplomatic um, offices, PTD, I thought like um, the way they maintain their um, relationship is beautiful, you know, kind of like um, um, the way they show, we don't really meet each other because like at the embassy we have like four different departments, but then the beauty of this, you know, kind of like um, once a while you see like you have a gift at your door, you know, without even you meet each other, but then you give sometimes roti gardenia and all those kind of things from them. And I kind of like, so, so I thought like, this is beautiful. You, you, you know, this kind of like, because uh, everyone is busy, um, everyone goes here and there, but then um, the touch happens um, indirectly. And I kind of like putting some gifts at the door and all those kind of thing. Um, mm, like for um, inviting once a while here and there. It doesn't have to be all the time, but but somehow the relationship um, grows professionally. I myself don't know what they do at home, what kind of struggles that they face, unless they come for a disclosure to me. Uh, but 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 um, but but uh, that, that's it. I I um, I understand what you uh, raised. But for me, um, colleagues, they are colleagues. Um, unless they are your colleagues, who are also your friends, then it will take um, what happens in the relationship to another level. Uh, thank you, Prof. Anand. Yes, Prof. Thank you very much uh, for your sharing. I think we can continue with Dr. Uh, Aziza. Right, thank you, Prof. Joseph. I would also like to welcome all participants. If you have any questions, uh, you're welcome to share your questions in the chat box. Uh, either me or Prof. Joseph will read out your questions, uh, whether it's uh, specific questions uh, to our speakers or just general questions, or we will share those questions to our speakers. Uh, right, back to you, Prof. Halija. <laughs> okay, my my, <laughs> my my next question, uh, uh, a bit hot, <laughs> the question, what are your thoughts on favoritism uh, that take place in the workplace and that may certainly hinder everyone to stay in sync? So what can stop uh, this actually? What causes it actually and, and how can we stop this? Okay, if you ask me, it's not easy to stop because favoritism can also be uh, 
the reality there is favoritism or sometimes it's perception. If you understand what I mean, well, let, let me say this this way, okay? First, okay, first you have a situation and you think there is favoritism, okay? Agree, Aziza? Betul, yeah? So a few people say there is favoritism. So this boss favors certain group of people or certain people, okay? Okay, this is our perception. This is our perception now. Okay, first and foremost, the first thing that we have to understand is we have to understand human nature. Okay, so if we think he is favoring somebody or a certain group of people, let us try and look and observe and analyze what makes him that way. Okay? Boleh? We analyze first so that we try to understand first. Not that we, we say that it's correct, no, but at least understand why it becomes like that. Okay. Okay, then we have an open heart. We are more understanding. Blah, blah, and then we can be more forgiving, but we have to find a solution how to solve this. Then we can stop what's the, what's the problem, isn't it? Okay? So, first, analyze first. Analyze first. Strengthen yourself first. Okay, like I tell you, okay, if he favors the blah, 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 but you believe Rizuki is in the hands of who? It's in God's hand, right? So continue doing good. Continue doing your work positively. Okay? Your research, regardless of what is the result, continue doing it. You believe in it, isn't it? Do it. Okay? Your, your teaching, your way or whatever. If you think from others, you need to improve, you improve it. Do your work. But even though they do not accept it, they do not acknowledge it, you still continue your work, your good work. Okay? Okay? Analyze the situation. Okay? Now, after that, if you ask me, for me, I always love to have an honest conversation with the person that I have problem with. Okay? At least I try to find out. Okay? So, I will go. Usually, I will discuss. I make an appointment. I will talk nicely. Blah, blah, blah. I even, at one time, I advised one of my students who thinks, who thought that she was uh, mistreated. There is favoritism. So, I said, Okay, show your excellence, fine, that's good. And after that, you go and have a nice talk with that person, with that superior, okay? So she indeed, she really went, okay? This one is... And then she got a very good answer, and she's very happy. And after that, even the, the, the superior uh, accepts her better and then offers her something that, that is, is, is very good, okay? You understand what I mean? So first she started with favoritism, and after that, when the boss understand her, and when she understands the boss, why uh, the boss why he took such action? They were accepting each other, and after that, she got what she wants. And the boss is happy; she's also happy. Okay. So this is what I always do. Also, usually I will go and meet, or if not, if I cannot meet, I will write. And usually I will write in the email, or sometimes I write in the cards. I send him a card or something. Okay, and explain things. I write a letter. Okay. Or oh, some people, sometimes certain people, they just do not want to accept you. Yes, sometimes it happens, okay? They just, it, sometimes you are in a situation where certain people just cannot accept you, okay? Usually this happens when we have rivalries, which is true, okay? Especially in the university, we are in a very competitive ground, okay? Everybody is very competitive. Everybody wants to be the best. Everybody wants to be blah, 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 again. So it's, it's very competitive. So what do you do? Okay, you forgive her, you still send her or she or he a card, uh, Hari Raya, you know, Ma'am Zahibatin, and hope. just do your part, do it nicely. And then you pray God that uh, to give you strength to face this situation in patience and with wisdom, and also to give, to enlighten these individuals so that they, they will be also a better person, a more understanding person. Okay, so that's the thing. So for me, it's always uh, first, calm yourself down first, strengthen yourself. Do continue to do the good things, the positive things, okay? And after that, you meet that person or you write to that person, okay? But you put forward your discussion in a very tactful manner, okay? Then you pun puas hati and you move forward because Rezeki is in the hands of God. No worries. No worries, okay? No worries. And if there's jealousy, that's normal. That means that you are doing something good. It's normal. Can okay? uh, You're doing something beautiful. People are jealous. Okay, why she get to do what she likes? Uh, Aziza, I know that you are passionate over certain things. You want to do what you like. So, because you are really true in your feelings and you really do what you want to do. Okay, continue, inshallah. And if you can find critics, 
criticism that can improve you, take it and move forward. Okay, don't worry about if if there is favoritism or what because rezeki tangan Tuhan, don't worry. Be truthful. Meet them. Talk to them nicely so that you puas hati. You don't keep things in your heart. So that your heart is is open. Okay? And you are happy. To be happy in what you do is very, very important. To be honest with what you can do, to be honest with yourself and your surroundings, your people around you is very, very important. Then we won't overdo things. Okay? I hope I answer your question, my dear. Yes, Prof. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Back to you, uh, Prof. Yes. Joseph. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, uh, there is a question for actually Prof. Kalija. Maybe you can take it next because uh, from Sada, uh, Fiona Sada from Asia Pacific University. Huh? Maybe in the next round. Okay. So just an info. Okay, Dr. Rizwan, my, I have a, another kind of perspective. Huh? Sometimes in the university education, uh, we used to say, okay, let me say this way. Uh, when you join as a lecturer, you may have a master's degree. And then uh, once you finish your PhD, maybe most probably you can be the senior lecturer. Until then, maybe we can see it is based on the qualification based. Huh? So moving from lecturer to senior lecturer, most probably is the qualification based. And afterwards, it's all depending upon our performance based, right? Maybe it's due to the publication, research grant, postgraduate supervision, even consultation. These kind of things are going to be, you know, uh, give you a good credit for you to be moving up, uh, whether to the next level. But sometimes we can see and, you know, with our peers and colleagues and friends, we can talk. They may have a, you know, a very difficult time you know, to doing this. It may be due to the family matters or it may be uh, due to the procedures they are interested, I mean, applying it. And then sometimes uh, when they are keep on applying also, you know, I can see sometimes seven or eight times they applied for FRGS, they are not getting it. But some of them getting it even, okay, it's just an example. So what we can see here in the tertiary education or being in the university kind of environment, uh, the environment is not same for everybody after a certain level, at least, you know, once you become a senior lecturer. But what happened, we, know, we don't know. Huh? So those who are applying for promotion, they may have something like that and then they are moving up. That's a different story. What I'm talking about, some of the lecturers or maybe some of the senior lecturers we can see, they are senior lecturers for maybe, you know, 20 years. You know, for example, I'm just telling. Out of these 20, maybe one or two only, they don't bother, you know, they don't bother to moving up to the next level or maybe the promotional aspect. They are very happy. That what right. For others, huh, we can see that they are really wanted to be promoted or whatever it is. And just because they couldn't fulfill the KPA due to various reasons. Huh? Sometimes even I have seen that some of the professors may have a students, seven or eight times they withdrawn or maybe the international students, they are not joining it. After joining two, three years, they are not continuing it. There could be so many reasons. Huh? But this is uh, normal. But how we still, you know, going along only based on the performance factor makes us to be the, you know, kind of a promotional one. I do agree what uh, actually Prof. Kalija already mentioned. Huh? So even though you may take up your time, maybe, you know, the PhD, you can finish it in three years or four years or six years. But still, the requirement we had to fulfill. Yeah, I agree on that. But that one mostly fulfilling uh, in the form of an educational aspect, I feel this way. But when it comes to promotional aspect, uh, so experience is there. Uh, so you are experiencing, your experience is growing day by day or year by year. That's no doubt on that. But in terms of the performance wise, not everybody or maybe not uh, most of us can do the similar performance. But is there any way that uh, maybe the management side or maybe other peers or colleagues can, you know, it's not like uh, exactly the same, but maybe one-to-one, -one, maybe an alternate way, these people also. But you know what happened? Sometimes we also can see, hey, that guy may not be doing good. Huh? Even after being uh, finishing his PhD 20 years before, still he's only senior lecturer. I mean, something wrong. So these kind of things will come out. And then, these days, uh, the, I mean, I'm, I'm not complaining anybody here, but just sharing uh, some of the juniors, those who are going up very fast, uh, like, you know, 
following the exact tactics, you know, applying grants uh, nicely and then publishing papers, they can go. Then they all can say, you know, my professor, uh, he is not good. I know him long back. And this, even when I do PhD also, he was saying, Adam and something like that. But not because, you know, they are getting things and then they are getting promotion is the way, you know. And this is where sometimes I feel uh, there is a lacking in the university atmosphere. Uh, do you agree on that? Or maybe um, what I'm seeing, maybe the only the wrong one, uh, it's not the case in a general situation. Or maybe if you also can come across or maybe seeing it, because I can see that uh, you are a Malaysian now in a different country and you studied at a different places. So you may have an experience with a different atmosphere. So do you think, is it like a normal one or maybe other countries or other places, they have an alternate system to overcome this? I hope I convey my question, though it's not a very straightforward question, but in a way I'm trying to say that uh, uh, it's not a very straightforward mechanism that applies for the promotional aspect, but it is how to overcome that. Prohanan, thank you for uh, thank you for the questions. I think we are very very lucky to be in the academic line, you know, kind of like because we don't have quota. You know, kind of like for example, you need that after three years of holding your current position, um, you will be you have the opportunity to apply for pool, uh, for associate professor for professor. Uh, there is no quota that this year or uh, at this university there should only be fifty associate professor, for example. Because when I uh, in here when I talk to the PTD here at the embassy, some of them they can hold the same uh, level forty four, for example, for fifteen years. Uh, they they cannot just go regardless how performed they are until there is a vacancy for that level. So basically, that made me feel very very grateful to be in the academic line. Though they they seems like more having a more prestigious life, you know, kind of being a diploma, uh, spending time with the ministers and all those kind of things. But still, I think we uh, in the academic line is given. Is having our own um, goods in, in this. Um, so in terms of promotion, um, before this, I I think I think I I definitely agree with you that before this, you know, kind of like I feel like it's a little bit um, kind of like um, one size fits all approach in terms of promotion because everyone has the same criteria to follow. But I think since last year, when our I mean, when our government were able to introduce the orange books. And it has started to be applied at UNISA, I think last year, this year, um, that we have four ways to get promoted. Either we go into the teaching line, research line, leadership line. Um, I think um, this is quite interesting, which shows that um, the ministry, um, the university, that they are aware of our concerns. I'm very sure it's not only your concern, it's not only my concern, it's the concern of all. Um, the academic staff members. So by responding to these concerns, by introducing four different um, career, career tracks, I, I thought like this is much, much better. And I'm very sure after a while, um, there will be continuous improvement in terms of how promotions will be done and all those kind of things. So, um, yeah, so basically um, the positive do whatever uh, you think it's good, um, and you'll be there. Uh, the, I always tell myself that, you know, and if you know that Four Seasons Hotel is one of the um, most um, successful um, business um, business group of Four Seasons Hotel, and, and researchers um, affiliate the success with their slogans to their staff when they say, like, uh, when serving the customers, uh, do what you think is right to be done. You know, they don't prescribe you, do this, do this, do this, do this, but then they, they tell the stuff when serving the customer, do you know, whatever you think um, are right to be done. So so basically, um, um, regardless, um, um, uh, regardless, because we, like, like, we cannot change the policy, you know, we can voice it out, we can express our concern, but, um, it's only when they want to change, they will change. So, so 
So we have no control over that. So uh, I think go back to what we have been talking about by Prof Khalija and all those kind of thing. Uh, uh, stay positive and do your very best in everything. Um, and the key will come to you, to us. Yeah. Thank you, Prof Anand. Thank you, Dr. Razwan, for sharing. Right. Um, Prof. Halija, there's a question uh, from the participants. It's from Ms. Fiona Sada from Asia Pacific University. The question to you is, if it is a case that you have done your level best, yet the staff member is still very combative and vocal, is it wrong to get assertive or authoritarian? Authoritarian. Uh, the straight answer is it's not wrong. But how do you do it? Okay, it's not wrong because there are moments that we have to be assertive, we have to be authoritarian sometimes. Eh? But how do we do it? Okay, in such a manner that they can accept it. Okay, so usually I can say that when I am when I want the staff to do something, I've given the chance, but he, he doesn't quite understand what I want, right? So I have to be firm about it. So I will say it firmly, okay? And then, but after that, usually I will have a, a, a nice talk with him, with that person to explain why I do that. Okay, so that he doesn't have a bad feeling and he knows that when I do that, when I did what I did, it's because I cared for him. And I care for the uh, the group and also the institution. Okay, so usually uh, after I'm being authoritarian, for example, difficult in the view of, of of my staff, they will say that I'm being difficult. Okay, yes, I'm being difficult. I'm firm. I say I want this. You just show me what you have. Okay, okay. For example, but after that, after he's showed and everything and blah 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 blah, blah and then I will comfort them back. Pujok dia balik and explain how, to them why. How do you why? comfort them? Usually, how? How, usually with my colleagues and my staff, my students, I bought them a can. I bought them a can, okay? Uh, that's very simple. And sometimes I bought them something and then I have a chat with them. How? And sometimes they said, I know you have worked very hard, okay? Never mind, you can go and see your parents. Balik kampung. Pergi lah seminggu, dua minggu. Bagi cuti. It's okay. I don't want to see your results, whatever. Go cuti. You see? So there are many ways. You think of, uh, you, you look at what he, he will really appreciate. Okay? He will really appreciate. Mm -hmm. So yes, it is okay to be assertive and at times we need to be authoritarian because we are thinking for their betterment. For the betterment of our group, of our institution. That is our job. As a leader, that is our job. We have to do that. Okay? But before being authoritarian, we have to try the soft way first. Okay, if they couldn't understand, because some people they need some assertion. Some people, yes, not everybody. Yeah, some people you don't have to say much; they will follow, they will understand. But some people you really need assertion. Okay, uh, I share with one of my experience one day. Okay, I have students can I have students from Malaysia, from foreign countries, and everything. One day, the student from the foreign country, a group of them, they come to see me. Prof Alija, I think you are being unfair. You always call the us, but you never call the Malaysians. <laughs> I said, uh, ah, okay. I said, okay, you know why? Because when I say something to the Malaysians, to this group of my students, lah, yeah, my students, they understand me and they, they follow what I say. Okay? Okay, and then they come to me uh, diligently and then they show me the results and everything. But when I told you, you don't seem to quite understand. So I give you the chance already. And after that, I'm a little bit assertive to you. It may seem as though I scolded you, but I scolded you because I care for you. I want you to, to be the best within your capacity. Okay? So when we talk to them, oh, then they realize that we care for them, then they're okay. Um, I was too, I bought the one belanja makan. Happy, right? <laughs> you see? So just to show that actually we care, just like with our children. Not all the time we pujo, we banje, blah, blah, blah. sometimes we are a little bit strict. It's the same with our students, the same with our staff, the same with our staff. Okay, the same. 
Some needs a little assertion, some no. You have to do it softly, okay? Some you can say things direct, some no. You have to make analogies, okay? So depending on the nature of the person, human nature is complex and beautiful. Those are challenges that will strengthen your inner self and will make you will enrich ourselves. Every time we face these challenges, actually, if we look at it positively and if we face it positively, it's enriching our own self. Oh, I'm sorry. Right, we don't right. lose anything actually. Okay. okay Thank you. That's promise. the first question. Yeah? I hope I've yes, answered yes. The, the question. Yeah? Number there two. Is, yes. There's a next question as well from Aisha Deba. Uh, um, how do we face a boss that criticizes our attire in front of our other staff and we start to be uncomfortable working in that environment? Because even our best seems to be worse in her eyes. Yes. So this. As we know, humans are not perfect, okay? So we can always change ourselves, but how to change others? Okay, now, first, you said you've tried your best, blah, 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 blah. Still, they got that And then you tell upper, you know that what she has done is not correct, actually. That's not correct, okay? For me, if you ask me, you do your work nicely, okay? Be calm, okay? I, I always tell you all, be calm first. Smayang, yeah? But smayang tahajud, be calm. Pray to God to give you strength to be honest with your 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 uh, your superior, okay, so that you can meet up, okay, and then you can open up to her so that she will understand you better and you will understand her better, okay. So usually I will advise you, but you, you take care of yourself, right? Eh? You do your work, everything you are there. If, if she asks you, you know how to answer already, okay. Make sure that you've done your job well, okay. After that, make an appointment and see her. Talk to her, but when you talk to her, talk in a very tactful manner. Okay, regardless of what you've done, but to a certain extent, you have strengthened me. You've made me a stronger person. I am more uh, alert with the surrounding. For example, like the kata, uh, dia comment kita punya this and that, whatever. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, but let me explain myself. Okay, blah 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 blah. I'm trying to change. Blah 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 blah. Okay, now you check out the thank you dulu. Lepas tu. You treat her, what you've done, but you still like this. So I would like to know why, for example. Kenapa macam ni? Kenapa macam tu? So get honest with one another. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, get honest with one another. Now you try your best until the part that you don't get yourself hurt. Hurt meaning hurt to a detrimental uh, level. Kalau the detrimental level, you ask your higher boss to change you. That's it. <laughs> okay? Uh, you've mm -hmm. got to know your level, okay? Uh, because the world is not perfect. The world is not perfect. Yes, here I talk about understanding this and that, but the people that we are facing may not be understandable and understandable person. And if that person doesn't want to change, what can we do? Okay. Uh, but at least we put forward what we feel and we pray God, at least they will have some insafan because in the end, they are still human beings. They have hearts, isn't it? Okay. And they will improve themselves. For all you know, they will change. And you yourself, on your part, you will be stronger and you will be better from their criticism. Usually, we get better from criticism. Okay. Usually, we get better and stronger from criticism. So, accept it, although it's bitter. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Prof. I think I've answered your question, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes, Prof. Uh, back to you, Prof. Joseph. Thank you, Prof. Okay, so there is another question in the chat box. I think this is, looks like uh, something similar to favoritism or maybe, you know, kind of thing. Okay, I will read the question for you, Prof. Uh, Dr. Azwan. So, in a situation where everybody in the team are seniors, everybody has no motivation to improve further. Whenever somebody performing better, then that person will be in charge for task like forever. Later, if the performer promoted as a leader, the colleague does not support, rather criticize, sabotage the new leader. How to handle this kind of situation? I hope to get answers from both panels also. Maybe first let me get it from Dr. Razwan. Maybe the same question later, Prof. Kalija can answer. Uh, Dr. Razwan, can you get the question? Or do you want me to? Yes, um, I, I'm reading the last line. 
I hope to get answers from both <laughs> panels in local Malaysia yes, as well yes. as other countries' perspective. Um, you know, kind of like um, though I'm in Jordan at the embassy, this kind of thing it doesn't happen at the embassy. Why? Because uh, embassy is just a very small. Um, we have a very small community at the embassy. I'm leading the I'm leading the Department of Education. Mr. Shazwan is leading the Department of Security. Khairi is leading the Department of 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 Palestine. So so basically we are basically um, we are the boss for each department, and then we are not even responsible. We we are monitored by the ambassador, but in the end we report to our ministry, each ministry, each, uh, in, in, in each agency in Malaysia. So basically, things are okay at the embassy because um, you have your own office here and then you like um, directly to your agency in Malaysia. So no, you are not the competitors, um, you know, to each other at the embassy. It's a very nice uh, working environment compared to, to the university. So, so because of that, I won't be able to give perspective from other countries, but I'm going to give a perspective based on my experience um, um, when I was in Malaysia. So, so I, 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 you know, kind of like this, the, when I read this question, I feel like, um, you know, I was, I was in this boat, you know, kind of like I had, I had this kind of feeling, you know, coming from a very young institution with kind of like very um, kind of like um, senior colleagues and all those kind of things. I, I, at the very beginning, I had this kind of feeling that they don't want to move further, that they have no motivation to do jobs and all those kind of things because they want to retire and all those kind of things. But those are my judgment. You know, so so those kind of things. So you know, you know, you will be in a phase where you feel like um, mm, these people are not good. They are lazy. They just want to retire. They don't want to do their work. Those are our judgment. You know, kind of like um. And then after that, I started to realize that you know, life is not. Life is going nowhere with this kind of like constant judgment from us about others. You know? Instead of, um, you know, instead of trying to look at them from a from a negative uh, point of view, you know, kind of like being being judgmental to them, you know, trying to to get into them and trying to understand and trying to develop repo, uh, you know, kind of like with them. So those are uh, for the for the, when you are in a senior when you are surrounded by senior people, you know, kind of like, of course, the pace will be different. You are at the very beginning of your career. When you want to go fast, you want to be an associate professor, you want to be a professor, and they are already there. But trust me, when you have um, positive um, appraisal of themselves, you feel like much more comfortable being surrounded by them. And then you start to have an open mind and open heart to learn from the experience. You know, they might, you know, from your judgment, they might be very slow, they might be lazy, they might not be, they might be motivated. But when you started to shift to see the good things in them, there are thousands of things to learn from them, regardless of their weaknesses, for example. Um, so, so, you know, I used to be in that situation where I hate all people around me because they are old, because they are slow, because they don't know how to write research proposal, because they never, they don't know how to publish in Q1, Q2, blah, all that kind of thing. But um, trust me, get rid of that phase and start try to be more humble, try to receive people with more, uh, with an open heart, with a positive mind, then you will feel like your surrounding will be different. Um, and also on the second part of the questions, when they say like, when we become a leader, a colleague does not support, you know, um, um, you know, kind of like this one, um, I, I know it takes two to tango, uh, they do not support and then, uh, and the, 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 the challenge is on us, what we can do to get support from them. So this goes back to our leadership skills, our leadership quality, um, fulfilling their needs. Um, so that, um, because in the end, the key of solving problems is that to have um, in mind that everyone is 
actually kind and they are trying to work on something good to achieve something good and we should be one of the enablers in enablers so when... sorry please so i think yeah no problem so i think when we are seen as one of the enablers to to our co-workers to people who are um uh, we are who, who are we are we are leading um it's going to be fine they will be giving the support and all those kind of things but but um uh stay positive be kind avoid judgment and and i i, I think the whole world will be at peace when everybody um have um good um attitude good appraisal towards each other and, and definitely it, 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 it requires agency from both sides maybe it's easier said than done but uh, uh, if everyone is aware of of the needs of of, of being kind um will be um in a world where peace is there thank you uh Dr. Aziza, I think you can also share the same question. We can get it from Prof. Kalija's opinion or maybe because the yes, chat box uh, said both, Professor. Thank you. Yes, yes, Prof. Kalija. Um, the question is uh, if you have your own view as well uh, on the question that's being asked um, where uh, Everybody in the team are seniors. Everybody has no motivation to improve further, and someone is performing better, and uh, so the person will be in charge of the task like forever. So if uh, he becomes a leader, the colleagues does not support. Rather, they will criticize and sabotage a new leader. So how do you handle the situation? Ah. Uh, uh. Aziza, thank you, thank you very much. So I understand the question is that people are demotivated. Yes, can you please reiterate? Uh, people are demotivated because the staff are seniors and they are not working as well. Is, it, is that so? Yes, uh, they are seniors and everybody seems to have no motivation. So you are the junior, you are the junior, is it? You are the junior surrounded by seniors, is that so? I think it's like everybody uh, at par with one another, everybody have the same position, but it's just that maybe you're the only one who's motivated and the rest uh, are not. And ah. so, so uh, you automatically, work, think, <laughs> yeah, if this, and then when you become the leader yeah, because yeah. you're motivated, uh, they're not supporting yeah, you yeah, and yeah, sabotage yeah, you. Yeah, so yeah. how do you deal with the this situation? This is difficult. This is difficult. Yes, this is difficult. Okay. If you ask me what I will do first, I imagine myself when I first entered University of Malaya. Okay? I was very different because when I came back, I started to do research already then. But back then, people were not very interested in doing research. So I was very different. Very different. Okay? So how to get in sync with them, with all of them, usually uh, what I did was, and I, I believe it is, it is the same for everybody, is that Communicate with them. Try to understand and know them better. Appreciate them first. Sometimes they are like that, you know, they seem demotivated or something because they are maybe they also have some inferior feelings towards you. Because you are new, you know all the new technologies, you are you are at the frontier of knowledge, okay? You just came back, you are just not so new, okay? You are from the 10 best universities in the world. So sometimes people feel a little bit. Uh, we do not know. We thought they are they are uh, demotivated or what. But actually, sometimes when you talk to them, sometimes maybe they are also uh, a little bit, uh, they have these inferior feelings. Okay? And sometimes they will think that maybe, oh, you are so young and this time you know this and you know that you don't communicate with us. You're so wrong. Um, you think you know better. We have been here for 30 years. We have sacrificed everything for the university. Yes. Um, they have thought. They've taught the students. They've uh, produced all these students. Okay, I spent my four years, five years in, in France or whatever. I published five papers. They don't even publish one or two paper. Okay, but I was in a different environment. They are in a different environment. So they've contributed in their way. So 
the and and I I I had a very good uh, time because I I communicate with them. We started a, a tea a tea group tea what do you call that um a, a social group within the department. So and then we buy biscuits everything. We take collection. I will go from from room to room to take collections from from the seniors. So when I take collection, I will sit down and have a chat with them for ten or fifteen minutes. Okay, and then after that we make. Uh, small uh, gatherings, you know, we get together, and then they don't feel uh, they don't feel bad already. You see what I mean? And I I remember I was given the task by Prof Jamil to to run the ISO, the first ISO. Can you imagine? So I have to talk to them because this is stupid. Why do we have to do this? Because we are not used to doing that before. Tada! Those days the lectures will come in and they just talk. Even there is no lecture notes. Okay. But me, I'm the young one, so I come with my my lecture notes on the transparencies. Then, for example, how? Oh. So then we talk to them. Oh, this is like this. If you go for holidays, at least we have your your lectures. Uh, you know what topics to do. So somebody who replaces you can do it. Can do the job to replace you very easily. So you talk to them nicely. You know. Ah, then they understand. And they do it slowly and steady. We be patient. We understand them. And most importantly, we acknowledge their contribution to the institution. Okay, even though today the acknowledgement, the big acknowledgement is papers, publication, awards. Huh? Okay, you are this, you are that, you are macam macam, kan? But them in their simple manner, acknowledge them, acknowledge their contribution in the propagation of knowledge to the normal community. Okay, acknowledge them. Then they will feel very happy. They won't feel uh, inferior or, or you know they they would you don't put them in the survival mode okay it's as though we say that they are not relevant anymore because we are here already okay don't put them in such a situation relax the situation and then they can come together with you and from them we can learn a lot usually we learn humility we learn patience from them which is not in the syllabus of the university courses okay that's my answer. I acknowledge them. Then they will come and be good to you. Now, even if you become a leader, because you communicated well already with them, right? Of course, they will support you. So if they don't support you, we think back. Kenapa, ya? Communicate. Go and see them. Because we are at the superior level. And if we are younger, in my case, if I want something, I will go and meet them. I don't wait for them to meet me. I will knock on the door. Hello, apa khabar? Macam ni, macam ni. Can I have a talk with you? Let's have a chat. Eh, Dia kadang jemput minum teh ke apa. Whatever. Okay? Kita yang pergi jumpa. Kita yang merendah diri. Sebab kita yang ingin memahami dan kita yang lebih muda dan kita yang lebih superior. So, kalau kita yang lebih superior ni, eloklah kita kat bawah. Kita tengok orang kita. Kita pergi tengok dia. Because maybe they are afraid to see us. They are shy to see us. Kadang-kadang bila you selalu sangat jumpa bos, orang luar ni, kita nak faham dia, kita nak kerja elok. Tapi orang luar pandang, ah, dia tukar kibutik. Betul tak? Isn't it? So, perception is, 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 is or many perceptions are not correct. Okay, so it's wrong to be judgmental. It's better to understand. Okay, to understand. You meet over there and then you meet your people surrounding you. So then, we 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 are clear. The platform is clear. Okay, kita kena buang semua fitnah-fitnah ni. Kita kena buang semua yang tak elok ni. Okay, be humble like what uh, our doctor said just now. Okay? Be humble, accept, acknowledge. Okay, and then share with them the new knowledge that you have. I remember those days I shared with them how to do the email, you know. <laughs> because those were the days. Today, I shared the knowledge. I asked my students help me. Okay, my young staff help me with me because I'm very slow. I'm very slow with technology. But they help me. So step by step, I learn. But every time I learn, I still forget. I still ask. And they are not angry with me. <laughs> Professor is so slow, betul. I'm so slow. So, but every time I say, I forget, they will come and help me. So you see? So I'm comfortable with them and they are comfortable with me. I share and with them very what lucky. I know. And, and they share with me what they do. Oh, that's it. And then we can move forward together. And, and you're very lucky, bro. I am very lucky, yes. And whatever we achieve yeah, as a leader, never say I. Always say we. We never work alone. Okay? And success is from God. God opened the hearts of the people around us to be together with us, to work together and achieve that. Inshallah. Be humble is a good question. It's be humble, acknowledge the contribution of all, 
do not think you are above the other, even though you are at the frontier of knowledge, be humble. Accept that. Okay? Accept others and appreciate others. Inshallah lah, I think. If you accept that, you will be good leaders and success, successful leaders. And you will be happy at your workplace, whether you are a leader or you are just the normal peers. Okay? Inshallah. Thank you, Prof. Back to you, uh, Prof. Joseph. Hey, uh, thank you. But uh, this time, I also want to ask a question to Prof. Kalija, just for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a question. I think I feel this is more related to you or maybe with your experience. If management install CCTV in office place without informed staff, what could the staff do? Or is it right to do so? Just an inquiry. Okay. I will answer this honestly. Honestly, honestly, honestly. Management must trust their people. Okay? You must trust your people. If you don't get that trust, do something to get that trust. Communicate with your people. Management, yeah? Because the failure of many institutions today is because of that. You got the top, you got the management, you got the one who work, okay? And there's no communication. It's just a seemingly communication that's there. But there's no communication. Um, you don't understand why you are given this task to do this and that. You don't understand because there is no explanation. There is no communication. Okay? So management, you buat CCTV macam ni, macam ni communist. We are not a communist community. Okay? So this is wrong. You are, you are, for me lah, for me, if you ask me, you are, you are, you have to respect people's privacy, even in the office. Okay? You must trust your people. So if you ask me, it is not, right to do so if you don't inform your people okay you may want to do so because you are afraid for security reason again if there is some case of uh, kecurian ke whatever can okay i understand but if you don't tell people it's as though you want to 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 become a investigator to look at the every move of your your people that's not right that's not right okay i hope i answer your question yes prof prof that is and a if, similar, and if similar that happens and if that happens as a group Go and see and have a discussion with your leader. It's always good to have a discussion. Okay? And then make it clear the CCTV is for what? Okay? And whether you need it or you, or you don't need it. And maybe at certain place to look at certain things, right? Uh, faham? So, for what reason? Okay? But if you do it because you don't trust your people, that's just not right. Okay? If you don't trust your people, that means something is wrong. In your management, uh, process. So you've got to 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 reevaluate and to find ways to get that trust within your people. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Actually, there is a continuation of that question. Oh, way, okay. How do we face if management simply changes to other non-relevant department with short notice of period? Let's say uh, from tomorrow onwards, you'll be going to this particular center <laughs> to work on. Okay, so this comes back to remember um, uh, in my slides, can understanding people, and then I said also we have to understand the reality, the realm of the world today, the reality of the world today. Okay, we are not the only one, the only institution is having that problem. Okay, all over the world, the situation is very volatile. Okay, I always say to my to my staff, to my young staff, and to my students, okay? In today's world, okay, from what I observe, Wallahu alam, yeah? Humbly, I think, for us to survive and for us to be successful, we have to be adaptable. We have to be adaptable. We have to have an open heart and adaptable. Because frankly speaking, yeah, if you ask me, like, yeah? If you ask me, even from the top level, I think we are not sure of what our direction is. We don't know because there's so many things that we don't understand, actually. Okay? We know we want to prosper. We know we want to have this, we have to do that. We know that, that we know. But how to get there, we do not know. So that is why today, if you say in UM, ke, in whatever universities, ke, whatever institution, ke, ministry, ke, even in the private sectors, you will see many things are changing. Hence, when so many things are changing, 
you will see that we will be changed to certain places. We, we will be asked to do many new things at short notice. Betul tak betul? Isn't it? Because of the environment of the situation today. So we have to teach our staff, strengthen our staff to be more adaptable. So how to do that? As I've shown in their slide before, think positive. Okay? So maybe at first hand, we see that it is not relevant. But if we come down, we take the challenge, we will see, inshallah, that it could be relevant if we know how to make it relevant, inshallah. Okay? Rather than complaining because the whole situation is like that. Okay? Yeah? So, okay, we take that challenge. Yeah? And then we say to ourselves, from these new things, maybe I will get more information more knowledge and one day when i move up these small small things that i do not see relevant will help me and it will be relevant to me and it will help me in my future undertakings inshallah have that positive thinking okay and to make yourself clear okay your heart clear can again i always like to discuss i will go and ask may i know uh I, I don't mind this challenge. Okay, but may I know what are you thinking? Why do you change me to that place? Uh, it's nice to talk to our, our leaders, our bosses sometimes. Then we can see the bigger picture they are, they, are, they, are, they are thinking and they're looking at. Okay? Now, the main problem with us today is that we can send messages very fast. So we thought by sending messages, we are communicating. Okay, this is the same problem from top to bottom. So we thought, oh, we have communicated to our people. Okay, but little did we know that we are just sending messages. Okay, but the subject matter that we want to, to, to send does not, it's not dissolved in that person's mind. Okay, so they do not digest it. So when they do not digest it, they don't understand, they get angry, they get distressed, they get, they get stressed. Okay, so we as leaders, we have to understand that. So we go down. This is when I say we go down and talk to them. Have contact with them. Ask them, do you understand why I asked you to do this? Tell me what is your perspective of what I've asked you to do just now? What do you think? Ah, once we get those big picture, we will become better leaders. Okay, and as people, as the staff, once we take the challenge and then if we face them, and ask them in a tactful manner, we will be more open and we'll be stronger and we can take up challenges and be more adaptable. And later, we will also be a successful leader. Okay, One day in your life, you will be a leader to something. Okay, You will be a successful leader. But you learn from young. Okay? Inshallah. Do I answer that, Prof? Right. Um, so... We are coming uh, to almost the end of the forum. So I would like to kindly invite uh, perhaps Dr. Razon first, if you can sum up in one minute uh, on the topic that we've been discussing. Um, so over to you, Doctor. Uh, thank you, uh, Prof. Aziza. Yeah, Dr. Aziza. So basically, um, Staying in sync, fostering understanding among co-workers. I think the take-home message from my talk, um, from, from my session is that um, uh, try to understand the motivations behind every behavior that you see at work. And you have to come to a realization that no human being has the motivation to become a bad person. So when they behave in a certain way, um, there must be something unfulfilled needs, the good needs that they don't achieve. And we need to help them fulfilling the needs so that the negative behavior can stop. And by having this, you avoid a, a, a conflicting relationship. You develop a harmonious relationship will help, which will help you to foster understanding among uh, people around you so that you can stay in sync for a long time. But thank you. Thank you, Dr. Razwan. Over to you, Prof. Alija, if you can sum up on our topic today. Um, I would say, okay, inshallah, yeah. Um, to be in sync with our peers, with our co-workers, yeah. 
Number one, I think, is that, of course, we know that we have to understand each other. But for me, the most important thing is that we've got to be honest, okay, with ourselves and the people around us. Okay, so try your best in doing what you have to do. Okay, be tactful. Okay, berbudi bahasa, ya. Yeah? And then, if your heart is not pleased with something, it's better that you communicate with that person. Okay, you can do like I said, you meet them, have a discussion, or you write and so on. So then your heart is clear, and you can move forward together. Inshallah, be them your superior or your your staff. Your peers together with you, yang same level, ataupun your staff, your supporting staff. Okay, your students, be clear about your relationship. Be clear. Okay, be honest. And do it in a very diplomatic manner. Very respectful manner. InsyaAllah, I think. And please understand the reality, okay? If you are having difficulty, I always tell my my, my people, eh? if you are having difficulty, my dear, I am having difficulty, my uh, my dear. I, I talk to them, okay? But Alhamdulillah, we got good sleep. But I believe my vice chancellor doesn't have good sleep because I think he has more problem than me. <laughs> so when I say that, they laugh, okay? So your KPI two numbers to people, it's okay. We can work it out, inshallah. Uh, if you cannot meet 100%, you meet 80% or 70%, okay? It's okay. It's easier for us. But the one on top, they will scratch more their head and maybe they don't have enough good sleep just like us, okay? So if we think we have problem, the one on top, they have more problem. Okay? They don't have enough good sleep just like us, okay? So if we think we have problem, the one on top have more problem. Okay? Uh, and how to hire it up? Talk. Communicate. Okay? Honestly, tactfully, diplomatically, honestly. Honestly, honestly, honestly. Okay? That's it. InsyaAllah. And of course, trust in God. Rezeki di tangan Tuhan. Situation today is not easy. Please try to understand the situation and understand each other. Why things come out to be like that today? We try. And then kita cuba, kemudian kita berserah. Kalau kita salah, if we make mistake, kita minta maaf. Ya? Yeah? Kalau orang buat salah kat kita, kita maaf, okay? That's it. Okay? Then we'll have a happy life, insyaAllah. Thank, yeah? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this wraps up uh, our forum session today. I would like to... Thank our esteemed speakers, Associate Professor Dr. Razwan and also Prof. Dr. Halija for their very profound sharing. I would also like to thank our participants for sharing their questions in the chat box as well. So um, let's hope that uh, the forum today uh, has been uh, enlightening for all of us and beneficial uh, so that we can move forward together harmoniously in our respective institutions or organizations. So now I shall pass back the program to our MC, Dr. Hini. Uh, I think there's something exciting coming up. Uh, over to you, Dr. Hini. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for very interesting and inspiring uh, forum discussion and participation of so many participants and question and answer. Okay, now it's a very exciting uh, section. We have a uh, gift for, for the, we will have a cargo section. Okay, let's share the um, cargo section and please get ready, okay, to the cargo uh, website. Okay. Uh, Dr. Uh, can disable for the screen sharing, I cannot share. You know who is the one doing it now so that we can make it as a co-host. Which name? Uh, Legitimate Processi, Amir Okay, okay, okay. Sure, sure, sure. Sorry, thank you. Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay, so this is the game pen, okay? So I have posted um, the Kahoot. You go for the Kahoot website, and then you have to... Key in this game pen, okay? So uh, there will be uh, questions and we encourage everyone to answer. And those uh, with the correct answer and uh, quickly, who send the answer quickly, you will win some presents, okay? So we have more and more sign up, okay? Okay, that's more. We have about 100 participants. Okay, please join, okay. Okay, so please show the first question. Oh, saya nak jawab yang orang pergi komen tu macam mana ya? 
Saya tak berani nak pegang apa-apa. Saya tak boleh masuk ini lah kan. Okay, let's see the first question. Saya nak cakap thank you. Yeah, to everyone. Okay, so there are choices, three choices. So please pick your choice. Please send your answer now. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, the correct answer, Dr. Razwan. Okay, there are 15 correct answers. Okay, let's see who are the winners. Okay, so these are the winners. Okay, so the we have here Sarah, Amy, Mecha, Reni, Azrina. And next screen. Okay, now it's a second question. What is the title of our forum today? Please answer within 30 seconds. Three. Two, one. Okay, we have a 15 the correct answer. Let's see the winners. So we have the winners, Reni, Azrena, Zura, CWH, Ika. So please uh, put your the email with your ID at the chat box. Okay, our organizer will contact to you. We'll contact you for the presence. Next. The third question, which of the following the projects initiate the project? Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, congratulations. We have a 15th uh, participant correct answer. Please see who are the winners. The grand winner is uh, Zura. So uh, for those uh, the answer cor answer correctly, please send in your email. Otherwise, you can also send the uh, email to this uh, email. Okay, please share your email because we will send you the presents. Okay, so thank you for your active participation. And uh, we will have um, the following section. So now is the closing section of the Stay in Sync Fostering Understanding Among Co-workers Online Forum. Today's online forum features uh, two esteemed speakers attended by more than 100 participants from public and private institutions of higher learning. We truly hope that you have had a fruitful experience of learning, sharing, and networking. Without further ado, I am pleased to invite Mr. Azro Isam Hamza, Deputy Director, Center for Leadership Sustainability, ACAD, to deliver his closing remarks. Mr. Azro Isam, please. Thank you, Dr. Hudi. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Associate Prof, uh, Dr. Noor Azliana Akmal Jamaluddin, uh, the project manager from UPNM, and our distinguished speakers, uh, Associate Prof, Dr. Razwan Rashid, all the way from Jordan. Thank you for making it uh, with us today. And thank you very much uh, to stand by, not saying as substitute, but I would say, uh, apa kata? As, as, as a standby resource person. Thank you very much for... for for, for, for being very helpful. And not to forget, uh, of course, uh, our respected Prof Khalid Jahawang uh, from UM. Thank you very much uh, 
for sharing today. Uh, moderators, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good still morning and very good morning. Uh, first and foremost, um, I would like to express my appreciation to the speakers uh, and moderator, of course, for their valuable contribution in this program, regardless of their schedule, regardless of their distance. Uh, and within this short period of time, things have run smoothly since uh, we kick off at nine o'clock in the morning. And I would like to convey my sympathy and doa for those who were affected by the recent uh, event of flood throughout the nation. Uh, let us take a moment for a while to reflect and receive prayers for their well-being and may Allah ease their burden. And I was made to aware that uh, one of our speakers who are supposed to be here today were also affected together with some participants from the East Coast. So let's pray for their well-being and, and hopefully uh, everything will run smoothly and they will be able to be in a safe place uh, and the post-flood should be a uh, process would be smooth sailing for all of them. And uh, I would like also to, my deepest gratitude goes to the all participants um, from all public and private universities, academician, administrator, and I believe there are also some uh, who are outside the academic uh, um, arena. And every single one of you who attended this program since morning patiently uh, and made it such a successful event. We are always excited to learn and share with everyone, with members uh, and partners as we continue to elevate our skills and competency, uh, specifically in leadership. Uh, as mentioned by our project manager today, uh, this particular forum of the Compassionately Academic Leaders in Action, or CALIA, uh, programs that has been initiated by our collaborator, uh, Prof. Jarina uh, from UMT. Compassionate leadership is not only refer to leadership pattern that is able to sympathize within uh, difficulties faced by others, but it also gives us deep understanding on um, the, the, the whole atmosphere and environment in our organization. I would like to mention organization here because this is sometimes beyond uh, what we have in the classroom, in, in the universities, but it also can be applicable in whichever organization you are in too. And uh, the actions taken then to overcome the difficulties, whether by the leaders or the individual, or even the community they lead themselves because they feel appreciated, respected, loved, and eventually that will uh, maximize the true potential. Um, we have lots of management theory, of course. We have a lot of uh, leadership competency, be it generic or technical competency that require us to be a good leader. However, we need leaders with souls, dengan jiwa kalau ke orang, orang, orang Melayu katakan, that are able to understand not only the needs of the organization, but the, also the, the, the needs of each, of every member within the organization. And though compassionate leadership, compassionate literally means sympathize, but in the context of uh, compassionate leadership today, it is meant that a leader with high empathy with soul to bring the best out of the members of the organization. The leadership is not just about moving up the career ladder to become a boss, but it also takes what is best to a better leader, or I would rather say, to be a better self. As one of the organization member and leaders or colleagues, we are all have played a vital role in unlocking potential of our own organization. However, unlocking potential goes beyond just pushing people around, just beyond make people work for you, but it is also to unleash and unlock their greatness and potential. Employing the transformative power of education unlocks potential that revolve around enable, to enabling people to pursue a meaningful life while utilizing their own strength, capabilities, and skills. Um, 
this is why we need compassionate leadership now more than ever. Compassionate leadership is not just about sympathizing as I mentioned just now, but it's also having that um, understand people with empathy so that we are able to make people feel appreciated, respected, loved, so that they can fulfill their potential. This program uh, is to achieve its main goal, which is to inculcate the compassionate leadership qualities among academics at all levels in higher education institutions in order to popularize the country's higher education aspiration. Uh, it also can be applicable in any sectors or industry other than academics too. Hence, this befits the function of a CAP, which is to nurture the competencies of higher education institution leaders uh, so that they are, have a good level of awareness uh, and competencies to drive compassionate leadership in respective institution. And I believe uh, the speakers today have done an extensive job, a well-deserving well job, uh, deliberating and explaining about this issue. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, Please, I would like everyone, since I'm not suruh tepuk tangan, you cannot hear everyone's clapping, but send me, use the, 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 the emoticon, love, send your love throughout the screen. Please. <laughs> see, you can see all the love flying there. So thank you very much to our speakers for, uh, for, 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 for today. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the value participant, uh, I'll pick up four. Um, pertinent points throughout this program. Uh, first and foremost, uh, in relation to understanding human nature and behavior, it's not an easy job. However, it is it defines the response on specific issues and individuals. With an open heart and clear mind, we are able to see beyond ourselves. We can see others. We can unleash their true potential. Number two, the five seeds method mentioned, which is own your behavior at work, to stay in sync with colleagues at work and find balance among those seeds. So again, this is not easy job to be done, but as a group, as a leader, and as a member of the organization, we can do this together. I remember just now, Prof Khalija put an analogy about uh, organization is like a human body. And I would like to add, each and every human parts have their own roles and very pertinent. Just imagine one particular leg refuse to stand on that particular day. It makes you hard and difficult to move around. I would put it in a manner that the leader is actually like the heart of the, uh, is the heart whereby it pumps the adrenaline, it pumps the energy to the whole body so that everyone, every single part of the body can move and work functionally. Number three, the key point that I take here is certain attribute that we should have been fostering understanding is communication. Sometimes communication is not about talking to others. Sometimes it's about listening, observing, and also understanding and analyzing what's happening around. So a good leaders don't talk much, they listen, understand and create a healthy environment so that everyone will be happy and can deliver their best at work. On that note, probably we don't need to install CCTV at work as what been happening as, 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 as one of the questions been raised just now. Change starts from ourselves and it revolves among the people around us and later it spreads to others that are beyond our circle. This is a positive ripple effect that we would like to see. So before I conclude, uh, I hope all the participants have benefited from this program. The sharing on how compassionate leadership should be is not about how do we want our boss to be. We should take it as what kind of leader that every single one of us would like to be and aspire to be. 
We don't normally able to choose our bosses or colleagues, but we do have the chance to choose to change ourselves, to be a better person and be a better leader for the future. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Secretariat team, UPNM, Utah, UTEM, UUM, UM, UNISA, as a cap strategic partner for this particular program and making it a reality. It is indeed a good program, and I believe that everyone has benefited from it. And as the main organizer of the program, we hope that this knowledge sharing session doesn't stop here. I want to see the ripple effect that I mentioned just now. Be there, be the catalyst, be the agent of change. So on that note, thank you very much, everyone. And over to you, back, Dr. Huni. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Azro Izam Hamza. So the, um, we have come to an end of the closing ceremony, and we would like to extend our gratitude to uh, Higher Education Leadership Academy, ACAP, University of Malaysia, uh, Trungano, UMT, speakers, Professor uh, uh, Dr. Halija Alwang, from University of Malaya, Associate Professor Dr. Razwan Abdul Rashid, Director of Education Malaysia, Jordan, of the Malaysia Embassy, Jordan. Moderators, Professor uh, Dr. Joseph Anand Tangaras from the University of Technology Malaysia, Malacca, and uh, Associate Professor Dr. Aziza Amaina from University of Malaya, and uh, also the, my uh, comrade uh, working committee members. So now uh, we would like to have a group prop talk. Okay, so common in the event, now we'd like to invite um, our speakers, Prof. Karija, uh, Dr. Razwan, moderators, uh, Prof. Joseph Anand, um, Dr. Aziza, and all the participants, please turn on the camera. We'd like to take uh, up this moment for our group photo. Okay, uh, technical tip, can you take page by page? Okay, cheers, uh, page one. Okay, next page, cheers. Okay, uh, next page. Cheers. And the uh, next page. Cheers. Okay, uh, technical team, have you taken all the photos? Okay, so the, thank you um, all. And please do not forget to send your feedback. Okay, you will receive a digital certificate for the winners. Please send uh, your details to the email to the uh, Dr. Lin, okay? And uh, you will receive the presents. So the, um, we thank for your participation and support for this uh, forum. And we hope to see you soon in coming uh, ICAP activities. Thank you once again for your support during this challenging time. And we pray for those victims from the disaster and family so, uh, so that they will be safe and recovering soon. And uh, salam hormat and goodbye. Stay safe, stay healthy. Goodbye. Okay, terima kasih. Selamat tahun baru. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank Team members stay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you.